You're listening to the Level Best Network. This is the Intercot Insider Live, episode 111. The Intercot Insider Live is brought to you by Magical Journeys, Intercot's official travel agency and the Disney vacation experts, and also by the fine folks at the official ticket center for tickets to your favorite Central Florida theme parks and attractions at discounted rates. And welcome to another episode. Glad to have you back with us. It's been about a month, I think, since the last time, and with me. A fine-looking crew from suburbs somewhere outside of Dayton, Ohio. Jason, you know him as Figment. How are you, sir? Doing well. Doing well. Yeah, uh, excellent, excellent. As I mentioned, drinking a fine, twisted mango diet coke. I'm not being endorsed. To promote this product. Wouldn't it be nice to be? Yeah, I know. Wouldn't it be Diet Coke? I'm available for endorsements at this point. Uh, but I've I've uh, I've switched off my Pepsi Zero and Pepsi Max, and uh, have kind of taken the the new flavors and embraced them. Uh, forget sure. what the, there's a bunch I... of other ones as well. The blood orange and something lime. Oh, what is it? Lime, ginger, lime, and uh, I don't know, some sort of There's berry. a red one. It's like, is it cherry? It's a cherry, cherry, one, I think. cherry berry, cherry, or twisted cherry, or something cherry, or so, it's not twisted because it's twisted mango. I don't know. Anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Off on a tangent already uh, from the nation of Canada. We have the complete whole nation of Canada with me tonight. Jennifer? Are you there? Hello, hey. I'm here. Yeah, and on how top, are you? On top of it, we're twinning tonight. I know. We both have our uh, intercut uh, twenty year uh, merch. t-shirts merch Your merch merch on, <laughs> and I have the highly elusive all black intercut hat, Ooh. including <laughs> yeah, that was very good, you guys. <laughs> black stitching on a black cap. It's hardly visible, but it's there. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, the other half of the Nation of Canada, Carolyn. Hello. And uh, as I'm looking at your Intercot logo, we were talking about I should get another tattoo. That's what I should get. <gasps> oh, how special would that be? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, then, and then the site will promptly go offline. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it. It'd be like an ex-boyfriend. How do I get I know, rid of I, this? How do I get rid of this stupid circle <laughs> logo thing? I like it though. Yeah. I'm all for that. Maybe you should just like temporary tattoo it just for a little <laughs> while, just to make sure, or, or draw it on with some yeah. sharpie. Yeah. You know, I've just... got the Epcot one on my other arm, so yeah, I can. That would be a nice pair, a good pairing. <laughs> I <laughs> Again, I can't guarantee. Like 20 years from now, you won't be like, "Why did I do that?" It's the dumbest thing ever. Oh. Well. I'll put like two little eyes and a happy face and make it into like a smiley well, guy. Well, you can. Yeah, you should have some alternative plan for it that you can turn it into something else like they do sometimes right. with bad tattoos. <laughs> That's fantastic. Good stuff. And uh, from Florida, somewhere down there, uh, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Yeah, we've missed you. It's been a few. And I had the plague. <laughs> the black plague. Is that the twenty four hour the plague the, or the two month plague or what plague? It was, was the it? never ending end of school year plague. Oh well. And school has ended down there or it's coming up on it? School ending? ended in Florida. Um well to help people out today is what, June fourth? Fifth? Fifth. Fifth, okay. Tuesday, June fifth. School <laughs> ended enough. June first. Oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Our kids go till June 28. Yeah, well, I was. W- yeah. We were talking about but this. I start in August. Our, mine go back yeah. to school August 13th. Oh wow. Yeah, we were yeah, talking we about this though. To- that I was thinking, Wait, you know, it's not going to be too long till kids are just going year round. It's just at least the way that seems things okay. are, are going. The school, the summers keep getting shorter and shorter. At least up east they were. I don't know how it is throughout the rest of the country, but. Uh, or in the nation of Canada, for that matter. But yeah, well, I want my summers off. I'm tired of homework <laughs> and lunches and all that garbage. I'm 
Looking I know, for... it's kind of like summer vacation for me, too. Even though I have to work, it's summer vacation from kids' school stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I will say that's one of the bad things about, and Cindy, you may relate a little bit to this, too, about living in an area that other people vacation to is, you know, you still have to work, right? So, and you get to see people having fun every day doing cool stuff and vacation stuff, and then you have to go and say, hmm. I have to work. That is very true. Or like when, like, say maybe when some of you come down and visit and people are like, I'm at Disney World. I'm like, yeah, I'm sitting here at work. Yeah, I can't come over and visit. I can't play today. I'm like, I can't come over. You're not that far, but yeah, all right. You know, it is a little, it's a little tough, you know, sitting out there watching people uh, going out on their uh, little uh, boats or parasailing or heading to the beach or you see people in the Walmart, uh, you know, with their little surf boogie boards and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm not going to complain. Everyone's like, oh, so sorry. Oh, so, so, <laughs> so sorry you live in paradise, John. <laughs> Jerk. Must be so hard. <laughs> I know, seriously. Uh, so Disney, yeah, there you go. Um, we've got some stuff to talk about. This is primarily a Disney podcast. Uh, and big stuff on the uh, front of Star Wars. The Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. We need the Star Wars music. <laughs> oh, I got, wait. It. Hold on. Sam, what? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> Ask yeah. and you shall receive. <laughs> Perfect. Wait, hold on. I can do this. Wait. So, <laughs> Luke, I am your father. <laughs> Come over to the dark side. Fame on. Fame <laughs> Give us Star Wars. That news. voice sounds like you're in that old Ann Acid commercial that goes in the gestion. Wait, hold on a second. Let me try. In the gestion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've been playing with our mixing boards the last couple of shows. Do yours. Go, do with the thing. Go ahead, Carol. Do yours. Do yours. This is God. Wait, wait, hold on. Try it one more time. We turn down the music here. Do it. Do it again. Wait, hold on. Hello, John. This is your conscience. <laughs> so dumb. All right. What is wrong oh, dear. with us? Oh dear! All right, Jason. What's we what's don't have we don't have time for that. It's a ninety minute podcast. <laughs> yeah, true, oh, I thought, no, th thanks for oh, thanks oh. for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> it's it's, it's been a great show. We appreciate. Goodness. Okay. All right. Well, so what's happening hey. with the Star Wars? Well, in case you've been living under a rock or just not following along, there are two Star Wars lands opening on both coasts. Um, we knew it would be 2019, but that was all Disney had officially announced. Hmm. Um, just uh, thinking about last week, they finally came out and announced the opening seasons. It's not a month, not a date, but they'll let us know what season they will open. Hmm. Uh, so at Disneyland, it will be summer of 2019. Okay. And Walt Disney World, they got a little bit more specific. It will be late fall 2019. So the Spacing rumors out. Yes, the rumors are probably like Memorial Day weekend or thereabouts for Disneyland, and probably somewhere around a Thanksgiving November time frame uh, before the Christmas uh, break holiday uh, for Walt Disney World. Hmm. So, but so they won't announce that this close in does give some some question as to how certain they really are. Well, so, and they always sort of massage those dates anyway so they don't want to be too specific right. this far out hmm. so so my question I, is I, I have I've just a, just to see if we're getting cheated or not a little bit here so uh, same ride going in both places right yep so essentially those out on the west coast get to experience the thrill that is the new attraction before Two. us. Two yep. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yep. Mm. We're going to sell 
Oilers. Not thrilled or about that, we'll Jimmy. Just have to travel to the West Coast to find out. Although you could look at it with a silver lining and say that they will work out all the kinks. That That's what I was thinking. It breaks down and stuff out there, and then maybe they will solve that by the time it comes to floor. You could. Well, that's looking maybe. on the bright side of life, then, there, isn't that? <laughs> yes, <it> is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I, I like that thinking, at least. I'm going to go with that for now. Excellent. And didn't they say more about the hotel, Project H? Yeah, so they um, also announced more details about the land and the hotel. Preparation 8. Uh, nope, <laughs> slightly different. <laughs> oh. They are making preparations for this project, but um, <laughs> so yeah, so it was kind of assumed that you know Project H, the H stood for hotel, which it did. It may or may not have, but they did announce and confirm that that project site, which you can see a map of on the Intercot discussion boards, will be the uh, Star Wars hotel. Um, still not named. Uh, the official. Uh, Placeholder name is Star Wars Immersive Resort. Uh, so unless their whole I think that's what they're going with. Axed, that, <laughs> that's probably not what they're going with. Star, um, Star Wars IR. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. S-W-I-R would be. Yeah. Would be, that's it. Swer. Swer. <laughs> the swer. And this um, so, so is they, it within for, walking distance? It's within walking um, distance, right? Based well, on that map, I was trying to figure it some out. sort of uh, seamlessly connected. Yes. So they confirmed that, which they had kind of mentioned, but this location now gives you an idea of exactly um, how, I guess, far that transportation device will be. Um, I'd so relate. Oh, yeah. Do it. <laughs> still no real details on that. Um, one other thing <laughs> they you did can hydro confirm- later. Hydrolator, yes. <laughs> Project H. H, H, H is right. for hydrolator. <clears throat> Step inside this and you will be transported. I like t- I'm telling you. Go past the windows and then the other door opens. It's, oh, it's gonna there. it's gonna be buses that come up <laughs> off the ground that have skirts around them. You like still I said, want that? I, I'm, it's gonna have the Logan's Run thing from yeah. Logan's Run the, the series. Logan's yeah, Run. The minivans with that's it. Instead of minivans, they'll be okay. We got hydrolator vans. Hmm, something related to Star Wars. Hmm. Hopefully, it's not just like a tunnel. <laughs> but I mean, they don't, <laughs> yes. don't say that. Walk, walk this way here. Yeah. Um, I think I'm moving sidewalks. I guess. Um, um, so cool, uh, a couple other things. Movers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that would be cool. Actually, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Then it's transportation. It's not through, an attraction. through a tunnel, and then like you would, it would you'd have video screens, and it would make you look like you're zooming by different things and, and a couple fans. You'd think you were really whipping along, just like they used to do. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, old days back in the old ye olden days could work again. Um, a few other details day. were announced. Uh, so one thing is that these will not be rooms you will be staying in. They will be referred to as cabins. Oh, as cabins. cabins, as you will be on a spacecraft. Right. Um, they already announced every room will have a view of space or cabin, I guess I could say. <laughs> Duh. I mean... Uh, yeah, sorry. There's just no you gonna, no you're, so another, you're not going to get a parking lot view yeah. in space? Yeah. We'll no, it'd be funny if they did. Well, they now, should see, do it like a no, space wait. parking lot view. That's what you I was pay more say. for a parking lot view. Because <laughs> you get a real window. Get... <laughs> that would be awesome. So if you have a Death Star view, <laughs> you pay more. And if you it's have like, like yeah, like these, you just see all these space cruisers and X wings lined up out there. <laughs> Outside, like, that's the parking lot. That would be your parking lot view. What do you think <laughs> outside of this hotel is going to look like, though? If there's no windows. Have windows. Is oh, it going to be a big cube? I know. What's well, a cube <laughs> with video screens then, like, to make it look I like windows? I would hope that there's a swimming pool at this hotel nope. for in the middle of summer. Nope. So you go back and into your con. Oh, Probably no. it's all I inside. I, I guess. don't think yeah. you're going outside. I mean, they if could have an indoor pool. pool, I guess, like a holodome. Yeah. If you don't pay enough, Jar Jar Binks is outside your window the entire time. That's it. Um, Misa, watch you sleep. Hello. I have to ask you to evacuate the room. 
Hello. Yes. <laughs> That's some nice PJs you're wearing. That's a cool <laughs> idea, though. Have an indoor pool because... Right. Holodome. And then have, the like, the walls are, like, days. now we're on the planet Hoth, and all the walls turn into, like, snow, and then, like, maybe sometimes you go and you're on Dagobah. So, do you, I mean, <laughs> in, in all seriousness, do you guys remember in, like, the 70s when they had the holodomes? Do you, do you, know, do you know what that they are? Star Trek. That's... No, That's you, no, where no, like no. you look out into the middle, it's like that hotel in Niagara Falls. Yeah, I'm Carolyn. trying to I'm trying to find like, a, a picture of one. I'm going to find it here. Here we go. Oh, so it's like, like the fake you're outside, outside, but inside. it all looked down into the pool here in we the go. middle. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I just put it in the chat window, and and we'll try and reference that. But uh, yeah, Holiday Inn used to have the holodome, so it was all yeah. the rooms were around the edges, yeah. and in the yeah, center yeah, yeah. they'd have like putt putt golf. That one and, has a mint golf. And I know. Yeah, and they would have a pool and stuff. So I could totally see see if what would be really cool, I mean, genuinely cool, is if they had a pool and then the roof was like a giant video projection and, you, yeah. you know, space and planets were moving by and stuff. Did you guys ever see the movie Passengers with Jennifer Lawrence yeah. and Chris oh, yeah, Pratt? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So yeah. they're on like a spaceship that's supposed to be kind of a resort, but they wake up from... Uh, hibernation too early or whatever but it is like a resort there and they do have like an interior kind of centrum room right. and the pool in there has like a giant window where you can look out at space and stuff that would be neat so i would i, I, would, uh, I could totally sure. dig that although i i have to wonder whether they're gonna do that like everybody said this is going to be complete I, completely indoors one way or the other so i mean you right. can't pull off the illusion of being in space if you suddenly step out a door and you're in you know you see Hot, Florida thunderstorms. Yeah, Florida thunderstorms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see one of the characters out back smoking a cig or something. All right. I mean, it's, you know, that would kind of blow the illusion a little bit. So, um, so one other thing that I think had only been rumored but not officially stated by Disney. Um, so guests who do book stays here uh, will be uh, encouraged to participate as a resident by dressing in Star Wars at- inspired attire. Which so they will no, conveniently have a gift I'm shop where guessing, you can. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for your convenience only. <laughs> for the low, low price of. People that are like, you know, when you would go to Whispering Canyon and you could flip over the coaster that says, like, I don't want to participate. Well, why, the, would you, they're, they're just, why would you why spend would you the money? Yeah. <laughs> right. you know. I really like, okay, I am one of them. I really like Star Wars. I know my, Mike would love Star Wars. My kids would love Star Wars. But I'm not going there and wearing some Princess Leia bikini and wandering around. I might wear a t-shirt that has Chewbacca on it or something. <laughs> but I'm not dressing up. Um, and like, Well, no, it know. even brings up a good point. So the, the whole Florida, I'm not wearing Jedi robes. Well, like, come on. There's so much to be learned about this resort, right? Okay, first yeah. of all, capacity-wise. I mean, you know, how many people are going to actually be able to stay there? It's kind of like opening up the castle suddenly to everybody to be able to stay in, right? I mean, it, there's a limited capacity. I can just see it. There's probably going to be a waiting list for five years to, to be able oh, to yeah. stay there. And then the question is, is there going to be a limit on how long you can stay there? Is it an overnight thing? Is it a maximum of a two-night stay? Do they put any limitations on that kind of thing? Right. Um, and ultimately, what the heck is the cost? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. If a, a deluxe resort is running north of $500 at a this night. point a night, can you yeah. imagine what this might be? And I mean, are you required to stay, like we were saying before, for a determined number of nights because you have like a storyline to follow? So do you have to buy in three nights? Yeah, they've, they've just stopped short of actually saying that. They're now officially talking about how it's a booked adventure. <laughs> So that does seem so. It's to like adventures by Disney sometime. kind of thing. Yeah. Only your and, adventure is in space, and you probably pay by the person, not by, by the, the cat. Are you paying them by the pound? <laughs> <laughs> but I would assume if you have five people in your family, you're paying for all five. You're right, not but for okay. One room. Anybody want to want to? Well, care to guess what the fur? Not, well, you might. I mean, you might, Robin. You might. Yeah. So it it could be kind of like uh, going on a cruise, then, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, the you know the more people you squeeze into a room, you might be able to get the cost down a little bit. But um, but any any guesses on the per night? If I mean if you Uh-oh. added a couple people together, 
I'll go with eight fifty per adult. I'm going to say north of a thousand. I'm going to say I'll, I'll say a thousand, really? thousand a night. Really? Maybe, but maybe. Ma- all right, hold on, park hold park on. Let me, let me. Well, let that's me. true. They probably won't do it per night. Right. It'll be bundled for the length. It's going to be. So. It's going to be around four ninety nine a person per night. And Holy. so that would that would put with it at no, about no park tickets. A thousand bucks. You're required bucks. to have park tickets to do part of the thing i thought that, that i'm not going to comment on but i am going to say that i think probably your per night rate is going to be when you add it together because i think it will be just like a cruise ship definitely that, food, that, that food perfect that? that's a, that's a good question too because like in a cruise it's, like it's a an cruise. all-included experience yeah. yeah so nice. that I, I could see that too like you know your like you entertainment your whole thing it's going to be around four ninety nine per person per they night. They better wow me with stuff to do for four ninety nine. I would pay that. I would pay that if that included my food and my park ticket. Okay. And my hotel room. So I would see, totally pay that. See where yes. that? Yes. Yes. That, that for sure. But if it's just just to be at our hotel, you don't get to go to the parks. No. I, I, think, yeah, I think it's an immersive experience. I guess it's you'll get. Pay for the role playing though. Like you said, Carolyn, you wouldn't want to do it. But look at all of the conventions. Not even just for Star Wars. Yep. For for any of the like cult sort of like TV shows, Supernatural, The Walking Dead, oh, people uh, go yeah. to those conventions sure. and pay eight hundred dollars to go for the day. Yes, I know, but like I'm just saying, I would go because I want to go and see all the stuff and watch my kids do all the interact. But I'd be like, if they're trying to pull me in and be like, oh, ho, 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 come eat some blue milk, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, and no, I totally get that because I probably wouldn't want to do that either. I'm definitely not a role playing type of person most no. of the time. But <laughs> so, like for you or me, it's kind of like, yeah, why would I pay eight hundred dollars to do that? But there are people who they adore that. Oh yeah, and, you know, they go to all the conventions. They let's let's be honest, they're not going to have to buy their costumes at the Disney. <laughs> no, they probably have to buy they're going to come working on the for six years. They'll have a change of clothes. And wrong yes. with that. you know, that's your. Th- that's your thing, but if that's you know been your dream to be in Star Wars your entire life, this is like a, your dream it's Nirvana. come true. It's Nirvana. It's yeah, Nirvana. Let's be exactly. honest. I mean, for a Star Wars nerd, I mean it. I mean, Ian, um, just saying <laughs> that that it would be yeah. You you can't get any better than that, could you? If you no. if it if they actually pull off a completely immersive, interactive Star Wars experience that makes you feel like you're in one of the films for a day or two. Is it worth four ninety nine a person per night? Probably. I think it'll be higher than that, honestly. See? There you go. Yeah. So that's two thousand bucks for my family for right. one night. Now that I'm thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Holy smokes. Well, I don't know, oh, to my point, I, wait, 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 to my point, like when you book a cruise, American. wait, 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 when you book a cruise, I know, American cruise, money, then. American, that's more like three grand Canadian, I know, I wish I had a cash register sound effect, I <laughs> really need that, I don't have that, no, but uh, what I was saying is, it, uh, it, gonna roughly start around that, but again, I think it goes down to the point where you, if you have uh, four people in a room, just like on a cruise, you're not yeah. paying five hundred dollars a person. They might bump it down to three ninety nine or three twenty nine a person or something. Or, but you might be at maybe twelve well, twelve to fifteen instead of two thousand. You know what and, I mean? It does depend can on I what I pay they by the hour. <laughs> I don't live like three hours of It's education. not that kind of hotel, Jen. It's not that kind I of hotel. I just can't afford it. <laughs> I don't think, but you know what? I could see that that would be something they could add later. Like you can't stay at the hotel, but you pay X amount of dollars for a two-hour oh. story. A two-hour tour? tour? Yeah, two-hour sure tour. sure it wouldn't be a three-hour tour? A three-hour tour. tour. <laughs> Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> it, uh, I think it will depend on what all they include, too. Like if the you know costumes are not included, right. you know, that gives them the ability for more – you know, we have we have in app purchases that'll be in immersive purchases and those types could of be, things. Could be instant but, add-ons via the app. Right. Have your costume delivered right to your room. Yeah. You could happen. I mean um, Yeah. The, I mean the other thing just to comment on real quick, mm-hmm. um it's kind of getting lost in the shuffle of announcements, but this was announced as the first of several results oh. like 
it's under that I name mean, is called Disney 360 Vacations uh, was the name of the program. I got you. Uh, so certainly if this is successful, you may start to see other themed immersive resorts like this. <laughs> Avatar. Just, uh, Avatar, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Just to add to the capacity uh, yeah. question John mentioned, you know, they may um, also open other alternatives. If the Star Wars one is booked, there may be a, you know, another one you could get into. Yep, um, I can see that totally. That's still true. on Star Wars, uh, back to the land. Uh, they announced Wars. a few other things about the land. Um, hmm. So they announced the planet that the land would take place on, which I'm going to guess is Batu. Um, but they announced the name of the area on the planet where you will be, and that will be Black Spire Outpost. Um, so someone asked on the boards, is this like Star Wars canon or are they making it up? Um, yeah, the good question. official answer was these are brand new stories. I think someone pointed out that Batu was mentioned in some aside somewhere, uh, not in the movies, but we still don't have episode nine out yet. So um, I could certainly see synergistic Disney having the film like end there or something or be part of that film. Um, but they did make a comment that they wanted this to be an original story. Right. Um, they just experienced and not something directly ripped from a uh, film. Um, so not too much else that they hadn't announced before. It's a wild outpost on the edge of the galaxy, hence the name. Um, right. <laughs> and then the what everyone thought were mountains, from what they were showing from the concept art, right. they are actually petrified towering ancient trees. Huh. Okay. I don't know why that's important to the story, but they apparently just like to use the word petrified because they used it like five <laughs> times in the press release. If you have to ask, Jason. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, we should already know. But, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all what's coming Star out. Star Wars? Yep, that's everything they announced with Star Wars. Some more concept art, which you can see on the Intercot discussion boards. Where's that, Jason? At intercot.com. Slash discussion. Yep. Slash discussion. Yeah, check it out. Uh, Links on the uh, front page. I know you kids are all uh, hopped up on your apps and your Facebook and stuff like that, but there's still a website behind all of this. And we, we can see you're looking, but you're not posting much. But But you're looking. You're checking out the pictures. You're checking out Jason's great information on the Star Wars and other things. So uh, don't be afraid to join. Don't be afraid to post. Um, the thing uh, I'm going to tie it in just because we're talking about Star Wars. I had the chance while I was in Orlando for Photoshop World, a Kelby One production, um, at uh, and I did not stay at Disney. Which wow, weird. Um, stayed at the Hyatt Regency Orlando, which is right across from the convention center. Those or Orlandoans or Orlandinians or people from that area may know it formally, I think, as the Peabody, I think it was called. Mm. Um, right across from the convention center. Very nice resort. Uh, huge con- huge convention center of its own. But uh, uh, the thing was, it was right down the street from the Orlando Eye and also the Point Orlando, which are two um, kind of neat uh, areas. Um, especially I like the Orlando eye with the, the uh, big Ferris wheel thingy dingy uh, that goes on down there and lots of good food, shopping, dining, all that kind of stuff. But I um, had a chance to see Solo, a Star Wars story or whatever they are billing it as, in something called 4DX. Has anybody here heard of that we, before, before I mentioned we, it? We have yeah. it in Canada, but different name. Okay. Where the seats move and everything. Yeah. And- yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I won't comment much on the film, especially because Ian is telling me I'm completely wrong about it. But um, I, it, I mean, it was fun. It was good summer fun. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, but they, yeah, they had uh, the 40X, which is, you know, it includes seat movement, uh, like poking you in the back and stuff. <laughs> like when Han Solo was getting the crap beat out of him and stuff like that. <laughs> Like you'd feel it in your back. And I'm like, man, I'm paying for this. Are you kidding me? Um, Plus it was in 3D on top of that. Plus, you know, the wind would happen. When it rained, you felt the rain. When it, you know, it's just all that kind of stuff. Wait, 
Yeah. Okay, maybe that's a little more high tech than we have. Like, so you'd get splashed with yeah, water. And no, stuff? it oh. actually would, was sort of really? misty and rainy and stuff. Yeah, and the wind would blow when you were flying through the space. And okay, and at one point, crazy. there was like volcanic activity or something, or sparks, or there was fire. I don't remember what it was, but uh, and they uh, turned on the snope uh, with some lights to make it look like there was kind of sparky lava. kind of things, lava-ish stuff Weird. flying down. Yeah, so a really cool thing. I w would never want to see every single movie that way. But that being said, this movie and these, the, an action movie or something, I could see like Fast and the Furious or something like that being a pretty cool movie. Jurassic World. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, you, you vibrate, the chairs vibrate, they move, they up and down, all the whole thing. And But yeah, and plus effects in theater. So sort of like going to see, um, you know, what was the... Muppet. What's that? Yeah, Muppets or, you know, any of the Disney uh, sort of 3D, 4D, Muppet Vision 4D. Only movies. it makes the Disney ones look really old fashioned when yeah. you compare it, right? Yeah, no, it was it was really good. I, I, I will say that. <laughs> As my buddy, uh, cast member X said, um, we needed seat belts. I mean, you know, you were constantly just sort of hooching yourself up. In the seat, sort of, because you were falling down because it was moving so much, you know. And so, and about the first five minutes, we were like, oh, this is a bad idea. And I was thinking, we shouldn't have eaten before we went to see this. <laughs> so, got used to it, though, and sort of settled in, really enjoyed it. So, if you get a chance, kids, um, and, you know, you're, you don't have this in your own town, or if you do, try it out. But if you don't, when you're in Orlando, uh, the movie theater at the point um, definitely uh, is is kind of cool. They have that kind of stuff. So something to something to think about. So anyway, oh. that's my Star Wars stuff in the movie. Like I said, it was good. Good summer, summer fair worth going to see if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, and Ian loves it. He's seen it like eight times, I think. <laughs> so... I still haven't seen it, seen it yet. I'm I'm going to have to go see it and eventually. Yep. So, what else we got on the uh, agenda for tonight? By the way, we've got some comments that have been coming in, so we will get to those in a little bit here. Um, uh, a bunch of probably things. our next biggest news story will have us hop out to the uh, West Coast. Okay. Uh, so uh, where you talked about. Uh, the Star Wars lands that are opening, uh, that's 2019. Uh, Toy Story Land, of course, is coming uh, this summer to Walt Disney World. Uh, but the West Coast Disney California Adventure is also getting their own Pixar-inspired land opening up, uh, in case you're not aware. Uh, Paradise Pier out there is being transformed into Pixar Pier. Um, so they recently announced a lot more details about that land uh, before it opens um, later this month. Um, so they named the quote-unquote four neighborhoods. Uh, so they are Incredibles Park, uh, which will include the Incredicoaster, Toy Story Boardwalk, which is where Toy Story Mania will be, uh, Pixar Promenade, uh, which will be where the Pixar Pal Around is, which you probably used to know as uh, Mickey's Fun Wheel. And then uh, the last area, which will oddly not be fully open, and we'll get to that in a minute, is the Inside Out Headquarters. That's the fourth neighborhood. Yeah, what, what's that? the deal on that? What is? Uh, so that attraction that's in there will not open until Phase 3. Um, so it's essentially the end of the Incredicoaster, uh, if you remember where the Maliboomer was. Right. Uh, I believe it's that area. So all they've announced is that it'll feature a whimsical, family-friendly attraction. Uh, if you look at the uh, concept art, which we have posted, it is pretty clearly uh, Flix Flyers from Bugs Land repainted. Um, so it looks like they'll be moving. No, it looks like they'll be moving that attraction because Bugs Land is closing here to make way for their uh, Marvel Land expansion. Um, hmm. And it uh, looks like they're just moving that ride over. Uh, some cast members, when we were out there, were actually quite convinced that most of the Bugs Land attractions would make their way over into Pixar Pier. 
uh, just because they wanted to maintain the number of um, rides for younger guests uh, as part of this uh, expansion. Uh, so at least one is definitely moving. I'm not sure about the others. The other odd thing was they announced it's four neighborhoods, uh, but as several of us saw when we were out there last month, there's a whole area um, kind of where um, the Cove Bar uh, was that's now closed. Um, and I think it's, is it Ariel's is the restaurant? Um, that whole section up until where Credible's Park starts is not named as a neighborhood. So I kind of joked it's the lost fifth neighborhood. Um, but that's where the currently very, very popular um, adorable snowman frozen treats are. Um, that's still reporting like 30 minute lines. Hmm. Uh, so that's for their yellow re- snow cones. Yeah, for yellow Jeez. snow cones. It's, it's their lemon dole whips. Um, so that area where the Lamplight Lounge will be, that's what's replacing Cove Bar and the restaurant. Um, that whole area there kind of doesn't have a name apparently. Uh, but a few other things. Uh, they're not in previous announcements. There will be a Jack Jack Cookie Num Nums stand. Um, they'll feature freshly baked uh, cookies. Uh, they've kind of already shown some of the trailers for The Incredibles. Apparently, that's a line from the movie. Um, Poultry Palace will be another of the themed uh, stands there in the Toy Story area, along with Senor Buzz Churros. Um, Buzz has turned into his Spanish mode. Oh, I get churros. it. I get yes. it. Okay. I was um, <laughs> When he's in then, SAP mode. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Then also coming to the land in phase two, we mentioned what phase three is, is inside out with no year date on it. Phase two will be Jesse's Critter Carousel opening in 2019, hmm. um, which is really not to, you know, uh, put too much uh, commentary in here, but it's taking them over a year to convert a carousel from King Triton's carousel to Jesse's Critter carousel. That is yeah, I'm a not little sure I odd. understand that altogether. Yeah, that is just odd Weird. <laughs> uh, park planning and guest capacity handling. But anyways, um, let's see what else. Oh, they announced the four new uh, Boardwalk games, which are now oddly in the Pixar promenade. Uh, there'll be Heimlich's Candy Corn Toss, the Wall-E Space Race, uh, La Luna La Luna Star Catcher. That's probably one of the more obscure references. That's to a Pixar short, if you have not seen it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, makes sense. Be, when you said that, yes. I was like, oh, yeah, where's that? Um, and then the Bullseye Stallion Stampede. <laughs> uh, so they've kept those uh, uh, four boardwalk games. Uh, that I believe is also where the um, Bing Bong Sweet Stuff will be. It'll be a large candy emporium uh, that specializes in saltwater taffy and a signature sweet, which will be rainbow cotton candy. Um, they're, they are also adding a classic band shell stage, uh, which will have live musical acts and your favorite Pixar characters. I'm not quite sure where they're going to add that along that area. Um, and then also, again, this is inside out, but in the Pixar promenade will be Angry Dogs, which will be um, anger hot from dog. inside out uh, heating up your hot dogs. Of uh, course it will be. Yes. So that's kind of the area. So a lot of different Pixar uh, themed uh, items there. The rest of the what is now Pixar Pier will become um, excuse me. Everything that's now Paradise Pier that's becoming Pixar Pier will become Paradise Bay or Paradise Gardens, I think. Uh, so from like the silly symphony swings over, will still stay on Pixarified. For now. For now. So it, it, the the third wave or whatever possibly to be canceled in the future. Uh, what it, it, this is supposedly a new ride. No one knows anything about it, right? Uh, it'll be a repainted ride currently in Bugs Land is what it looks like. Now the uh, Inside Out one. Yeah, that'll be a repainted Bugs Land ride. That's what Flix Flyers is. It's currently the, so, uh, it's like a balloon ride. But that's yeah. in the third, third yes, phase? That's, so that not, they won't even put a date on yet. So basically we're, we're not adding any new attractions. It's just re-theme everything there to 
try and... Correct. Technically, they are reducing capacity. Um, really? Because there's probably, what, two... Uh, what else is in Bugs Land? There's the Francis Ladybug Spin. Is the, that the bumper right? car one? The, no, the bumper car, that's a different one. What are their names? Tuck and Tumble or something. Tuck and, and then roll. the Heimlich Tuck and Roll. And then the Choo Choo, Heimlich's Choo Choo Train. Um, so there's four sort of, and plus there's dots like Puddle Playground or something. Um, so, so there's five attractions they're closing, plus um, it's tough to be a bug just closed. So that was six attractions in that land they've closed, and they're only moving one officially so far into. So, wh- I mean, what's going to happen? Just big walls? These are all, these things are all closed now, kind of like Wonders of Life? Um, I mean, it will become the new Marvel Land. So they're oh, using that. Okay, so they're going to reclaim Guardians the space. And the Galaxy is, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So since that's right next to Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> Mission Breakout, that will become a Marvel area. The, the when is that going to happen? 2020. Okay. 2021. Okay. Uh, the only thing they announced so far is a Spider Man themed attraction. And the rumor is uh, that will simply take over. It's tough to be a bug with a Spider-Man 3D attraction. And then... Isn't there don't know one what of those in, the in land. Florida Universal? No, that's that's a ride. This would just be a movie, right? Yeah. Probably. Yep. Yep. Ah, I mean, probably. they're probably just going to repurpose the theater. They don't the have theater. a lot of land there. This was actually kind of a surprising announcement because uh, a lot of the cast thought they were going to go into the there's a cast parking lot directly behind the tower right uh, that they could get to pretty easily and again it would sort of envelop the tower area into the land um but they, that appears to be that'll be fa- their phase three so if guardians was phase one the bugs land replacement would be phase two and then phase three which is rumored to have some sort of uh for disney fairly big roller coaster that would be part of phase three. I heard a rumor it was going to be a Captain America roller coaster. Or something. Uh, Captain America flying roller coaster, yes, has been the rumor. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. A flying roller coaster. Hmm. I'm not a general. Have you guys tried the flying roller coasters? I don't yeah. even think I know what a flying roller coaster is. Well, one that you're pretty stupid. much laying on your belly. and. Oh, I've never so done feels that. Like you're flying. Yeah. I um I've done a few, and depending on how they're done, it's not bad. Like Manta at uh, Sea World, I believe, is a flying mm-hmm. coaster. Um, cool ride. That I would definitely do again. It's a little scary, but um, I did one at Six Flags and outside of Washington D.C. Six Flags America, uh, Batman ride, I think it was or something. And no joke, I felt like I was going to fall out of the ride the whole time. Like, well, that's because Batman doesn't fly. I, well, I don't, well, he's a bat. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't fly. Batwing. But I he's also a man. <laughs> I don't argue. What, a weird I'm, what I'm trying to tell you was, depending on how it's done, like I didn't feel like I was strapped in well enough. Like I literally felt like I was going to go flying out of the coaster. I was scared crapless. The whole time, I, and I'm usually really good with coasters and stuff like that. And I was excited to try it out, and I came off that thinking I will never do that again, ever, 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 ever. But then Manta has done really, really well, and I love. I've been on that ride like five or six times. So, anyway, flying coaster. Yep. Yay. Uh, so speaking of superheroes, but changing coasts back to Walt Disney World. Okay. Uh, John, I think you just experienced this. Uh, right now, there is the Incredibles Expo going on yes. in Tomorrowland. Yes, I did. So uh, thank you to uh, Disney PR for um, inviting me down to do that. Um, you got to spend just a day in the park kind of seeing. They, they've done uh, some overlay stuff uh, on Tomorrowland. Um, and... Really, it's it involves a couple new shows uh, going on, uh, including a Diaper Dash, an Incredibles show, lots of Incredibles characters. If you like the Incredibles, they are going to be out and about all the time. Um, out and about. Out, out and about. Out and about. Out and about. <laughs> um, yeah, Elastigirl was out a lot. And uh, Mr. Incredible saw him a lot as well. Um, and apparently... 
Uh, they do have some meet and greet kind of thing. But um, anyway, bottom line is uh, the thing that I liked the best, which Carolyn thought wondered if it was the most annoying thing, <laughs> of uh, was filling in grumpy. Pants. No, no. What, well, when I posted the pictures of what they have is. Uh, it, I think there are five of them, although at the time I only saw four, and I think one was out somewhere else. They have these uh, Uber fans, kind of Increta fans, or I forget what they call them. I'd have to look it up yeah, on my own. Yeah, post. I think it's Increta fans. Yeah, something like that. And essentially what they are is they're dressed up as folks that go to, like, cosplay, you know, kind of conventions where they're Uber fans of something, and Uber. they dress up like the characters, and they act like the characters and stuff. Well, each one of them, each one of the four or five, there are five of them, I think, uh, have their own name and their own persona, and they're out, and they're, like, trailing the characters all around, and they're out talking to guests, and then all of a sudden, when the characters come out, they're like, oh, my, look at this over there, and, you know, they, like, go nuts, and they act like super fans, which... I thought was really funny, and now Carolyn was wondering whether it could be really no, okay. annoying. I, I didn't. I didn't know that's that is funny. I think that it's it, funny. it was when you just showed the pictures of them. I thought they were just going to be like clowning around, like I don't know, like you're just trying to walk. From, I'm just trying <laughs> to go get a Dole Whip. Leave and, me alone. And they're and like oh, blah, 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 all in your face and stuff. No, but that actually sounds funny if they're freaking yeah. out because. There goes Mr. Incredible. Or so they, that it- they play it like that. They also, each one of them, like I said, has their own superhero character that they've invented. So it's kind of funny to look at their costumes and see what they've done. Um, you know, and it just it, it plays pretty well into that. And I, like I said, I think it's probably the coolest thing about the Incredibles Expo or, you know, the Incredible Tomorrowland Expo. Um, so they're, they're real good. And I have a feeling, I swear, like one of the guys is from the adventurers club. Like I swear I've seen him. So these are, these are kind of comedic, uh, folks and, uh, definitely are, improv. are yeah, like improv. They yep. the, very good at improv and they were funny yeah. and they, you know, stood for photos. A lot of people are not kind of clued in to sort of what they are. So there's been. A lot of people who are just thinking they're guests there who are just Weird. dressed up. And, Weird people. Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> I guess that does sort of happen. You know, now you've got like at Harry, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you got lots of people dressed up like they're going to Gringotts and all that kind of stuff and going to the school and whatever. And so these, I think, are seen by some folks as just a natural extension of... <clears throat> The Incredibles and Tomorrowland and stuff like that, and people don't realize they're actually characters. So, have some fun with them, uh, say hello, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but one of the other things that was going on in Tomorrowland was the uh, what is it, Jack Jack's uh, diaper dash? <laughs> yes, I believe that was the official name. It's uh, you know. I... How right. successful is how it to... when it's ninety five degrees out? Yeah, how to put this? Um, so. I, from what I understand, they do this on the cruise lines, right? Uh, apparently, they have a, a diaper races and stuff like that. Where it, The concept is this, all right? So you put the kids down with mom or dad at one end, and at the other end of the quote-unquote racetrack, you know, which is pretty much just a straight line, uh, you put the other parent, and when the race says go, they crawl from one side of the track to the other, and whoever, you know, you kind of like... Mm-hmm. Trying to figure out who's going to win, right? Which is great until nobody crawls. <laughs> like they say, go, and they just sit there, they or they start there. crying, or you know. Um, so, although somebody said that's the funnier time is when nobody goes. When nobody goes. But uh, I so, know. I feel so bad for the cast member, though. I feel like they're sitting there and the sweat's trickling down their back, and they're like, "Oh God, please don't." It's, it's Please, a t- someone's for Look, crawling. I mean, let's let's be completely honest. It's a t- that's got to be a tough gig because I um, mean, yeah, yeah. The, it was the day we were there. It was in the nineties, and the humidity level was ninety plus. I, I mean, you know, I'm stare, you know, there, and I made the mistake of wearing a, a t shirt under my intercot shirt. Like it's just like the old guy thing to do, right? Mm-hmm. You're supposed to do that to stay cool, right? Where. <laughs> It's 
Contra- okay, okay. Contrary to every known thing. Like, you just want less layers instead of adding a layer. But I, there I was with the layer. I was soaked. Like, just sweating and probably looking horrible representing the site. But... um the bottom line is, you know, the the kids are crawling across a mat. It's hot. Um, you know, I, I just, yeah, I don't envy the cast members. And uh, it was funny. I, I really feel like maybe they could have added some shade, though. Um, yeah. For everybody involved. If they, you know, if like and they did the thing in Epcot where they had the, the things overhead at one time. Have they taken those down yet? Uh, I think so. The shade yeah. things. But, like, like, they have the whole, there's the closed queue for Stitch. Like, why couldn't they have done it in there? I I just think probably because it would create, like, a crowd of people, like, right where everybody's going. Yeah, it's blocking the path. Well, you could, like, walk into it if you Go back to to where um, Tent City was, way back, kind of back. (laughs) They could have done it in the tent, yeah. Being kind of shady trees and stuff back there. There There's actually the Galaxy Palace Theater back there, too. I think that's just walled off. I don't know if they demoed it or not. I thought they demoed that. They may have demoed it, but the space should be there. Yeah. Well, the bottom it's a line. It's parking lot now, actually. Bottom, bottom line <laughs> is there's plenty of space. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, it's a parking lot. It is. Uh, in front of the Tomorrowland stage right there, there's plenty of space for it. It's it yeah. just they need, they desperately need some overhead kind of shade if they're going to be doing Maybe like a canopy kind of, or something yeah like. exactly yeah. like i'm just well, yeah because it's only going to get worse i mean i'm looking you know. right now it's so what time are we at it's nine o'clock and yep. it's still 81 degrees here with 74 percent humidity yeah. and it's still only the beginning of june i'm i'm with you 100 percent uh, although i do just have to say like that is an activity they do uh like in between innings at my local triple a yeah. Uh, yep. baseball game so right. you know, if i really want to you know go to disney to see that i'm expecting a little bit something different <clears throat> yeah i you know what it's just a it's a 10 minute time waster you know right. really you know you're just there it's like oh what's going on here and do, you, okay. do you get okay. anything if your kid wins like what's, I think what's a bottle of water <laughs> you get a jack jack sticker you jack jack sticker <laughs> yeah, probably. a little sticker to put on um actually i don't know I really don't. I can't answer that question. I would hope they give them something. You know. Yeah. You think get it like a pin or a medal or something. Pin, yeah. medal. You know, you get a photo. I think definitely. But uh, ice water. Ice water. <laughs> yeah. Something. Only the winners get yeah. water. I I don't know. So that that you know between that it, it's mostly the Incredibles Expo is just uh, it is that uh, there's not it's not like there's I mean that in the shows. Did you try any of the special food? Oh yeah had? yeah yeah. By the way, yes I did. Yes, I did. I tried the Mrs. Incredible pretzel mask, which uh, is essentially what? it's what? it's a pretzel shaped as a mask, like the thing that goes like Zorro's mask. Yeah, like the mask. Yeah, yeah like Mrs. the raccoon uh, raccoon uh, mask. Yeah, like with black sea salt. black sea salt. Yeah. So I, I, I'm all for it. Actually, the pretzel was not bad as a Philly pretzel guy. And um, I asked you, and you said that the ratio to cheese to pretzel, there was, plenty. was plenty of cheese um, but, included. But apparently we have differing ideas well, of how I, much I, cheese I, is required on a pretzel. I feel like cheese with my pretzel. <laughs> I feel like no cheese would be enough cheese for Ian. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it was a four, just so you know, it was a four ounce container of cheese, of whiz, as it were. Um, and nope. it, and it was, uh, the cheese was, was uh, warm? Was, was it warm or cold? It's warm. Okay. And, and it That's was, uh, salty. Uh, the, the, the cheese itself was salty as well. So it was uh, plenty of That's salty. So you have to buy a bottle of pop with it too. <laughs> exactly. Or soda, sorry. Soda, yeah. Yeah. Soda. Are there the any. State. Were there any Z's in the spelling of the word cheese? <laughs> That's Zed. Call that cheese. Zed. Oh, uh, yeah. So that was Z. That was good. Um, I did. I, you know, it was around or after. I think it was after lunch or bef- way before lunch or whatever. And I, I was only there a little, a, a little over two and a half for three hours. Um, because I had to get back to my conference. And uh, I think the other stuff was, 
you know, like sandwiches and things like that. Yeah, the Elastigirl burger is the yeah. other one. It's a burger with cheese sticks, fried mozzarella sticks. Burger They're made out of elastic. Very chewy. <laughs> a, a plenty of cheese. Cheese seems to be the common yeah, thing. That, that, very, that one is very cheesy, but yeah. There, there was some controversy, again, controversy with asterisks. There's bigger issues, but apparently the uh, marketing picture showed the bun uh, with a <laughs> eye burned into it. Apparently, the actual burger did not have that eye, and several bloggers were burger. very, were oh, very angry MG. about that. Oh my! That's that's party <laughs> fat. Hey. We get our not, our knickers in a knot about about not having the burnt in seared me. eye in your manager. Of the bun. I was under the impression that my bun would have an eye burnt into the top of it. Can I speak to your supervisor, please? I can almost guarantee you that conversation happened. <laughs> anyway, this just in. Disney controversy. <laughs> there is no eye on the top of a bun. There, there is no Film eye. Film at 11. There's, There's no, no eye, eye in the burger. burger. There's no eye in the burger. Uh, oh. Why? Why, yeah, well, yeah, you there's know. no why either. There's no, you know, there um, is no why. Speaking of spelling, Jason, you yes. you said there's a Dole Will Churro, <laughs> but I think you meant Dole Whip Churro. I did indeed. Are we, are we moving on to food? Yes. We've got, we've left uh, apparently we are, we're staying on food. Okay. So, um, right. changing coast again is the coast hopping podcast. Yep. Um, so we talked last episode about the Churro Challenge at Disneyland. Um, they added a new churro like about a week and a half after we left there hmm. uh so they introduced a what every fan will call a dole whip churro uh, the official name is of course pineapple churro but we all know what <laughs> I thought the real doors thing. were closing <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> please stand clear of the doors <laughs> oh. uh yeah no, so I... it's pineapple churro so it is can be found at the Sleeping Beauty uh, Castle Churro Cart. Uh, so we think it replaced the rose gold strawberry one, but I haven't seen a report confirming that. Um, it is priced at five twenty five by itself, or six twenty five with a whipped marshmallow uh, sauce. And what's the uh, ratio on sauce to churro? <laughs> I do not. Will I, will I be happy with the ratio? 0. 0.4375. Oh, good. Okay. That, now, that what, with the grade. which churro did you guys enjoy the best or the most? Was it the rose gold? When oh, you, you weren't on the last guys? podcast, were you? No, oh, um, I was not. That's right. But I really enjoyed yeah, looking the, at the pictures you guys on like Instagram. The, not the rose gold, pebbles, but fruity The pebbles. rose gold and the um, one from Bugs Land, the iced cocoa donut. Uh, I think had the most positive responses. All right, all right. Otherwise, we had one or two two detractors. I think for all the other ones. I still want to try the carrot cake one. Yeah. 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 Which they all got cake. they all got Pixar names later too. It's like they forgot to do that, and then they renamed them all because they did not have those names when we were there, except for I think one of them, and then they renamed them all with Pixar character names. Like about next week it was a little odd. Like that one is now the Presto the Rabbit Churro, another kind of obscure Pixar reference. Huh. All right. All um, all speaking of food, and we're in Disneyland. They just got mobile order. That surprises me that it took them that long. Mobile order is the greatest thing ever. They're a little yeah, behind on the tech there, on the West Coast, yeah. generally speaking. Why, yeah, people out there in the world. Why are you not using this wonderful service? I, I got to agree with you on that. So a few, at least a few times, um, I, I walked up to a place um, it, it, on a recent trip, not this past time, uh, but I was reminded because in Tomorrowland they had this uh, at the little place where I got the pretzel. But yeah, it, it, I walked up. The lines were like super long. I knew it was going to be like 20 minutes in line and getting my food and stuff like that. So... Pulled out the app, placed an order. Five minutes later, I was checking out and just leaving. Okay. So. I have two scenarios. One is, yeah. this is what I do. We, our family, we have four in our family. Before we, like before lunch, okay, we're getting on this one last ride and then we're going to go have lunch. Great. While we're in the lineup for the ride, order your food. Yeah. But you don't hit the, I'm here now, prepare my food button. 
Right. So you got your order in, forget it. Then as you get off the ride and you're walking to the restaurant, hit the button. And then you cruise <laughs> right into the restaurant, right up to the counter, and they're going, Carolyn, your order is ready? <laughs> I'm like, yep, I'm here. Or I've had it where we've gone into, um, oh, what's Rizzo's Pizza Planet place at Hollywood Studios? Nah, the Pizza Rizzo. Rizzo. Yeah. Pizza Rizzo. We went in there. Got into the regular line and mm-hmm. stood and stood. And in the time that we were still standing in the line, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to order on the mobile app. Ordered it, got out of line, went over, and my food was ready. And we still still wouldn't have even ordered yet in the regular line. That's yeah. how fast it is. So people, well, maybe I shouldn't be saying Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, you probably don't don't give away the show. <laughs> it's, never mind. It's terrible. It's on. the worst thing they've ever had. It. Ignore <laughs> Ignore. <laughs> Ignore. No, worst case, they'll open up like two or three counters for mobile pickup. But it's great. You just show up. That You show them your, your yeah. app and they say, yep, you're 7256. Cool. Here's your food. And you're done. You've already paid through and the it, app. It, it is no- quick. Like they, it, it seems like they have somebody separate yeah. processing those things. That, yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, there weren't, surprisingly at Disneyland, there weren't that many they added um it was bengal barbecue galactic grill gibson girl ice cream parlor hungry bear and jolly holiday oh and red rose tavern which used to be pinocchio's um but that's it at disneyland so yeah, or is at disneyland they have a lot more that's, table service they so will they will add more fun. though cause that's how they started it at yeah Kingsport. they'll expand once yeah. they realize right. it's popular if it there's no dual whip there yet so that that became like the best thing ever at Disney World, where you could mobile order. Mobile Dole. order Dole Whip, you can. Yep. Yep. I didn't know. Oh that. yeah. <gasps> yep. We did. We did it. I caught twenty. Where were you? <laughs> what? It's just in. Apparently, didn't I caught twenty. We all ordered Dole Whips on the mobile order. Wow. Okay. Twenty. Because Dole Whip, I think, yeah. is always the longest line, yeah. no matter what. Like I have never understood that it's soft serve, <laughs> but. You yeah, order you know, it, and then you like even once you're up at the window, you order it, and then you stand there. It's and you stand there. Soft serve. I, mean, I, I, people. I don't. I don't know. Just put the soft serve machine out. Let me serve myself like a yogurt place. <laughs> Not to mention, I can go yeah. across island and get it right here in Hilton Head. So <laughs> they have it at the Disney Resort. Of course, it's yeah. not called Bull Whip, but you know, All right? Same thing. We get it. Um. <laughs> On behalf of the nation of Canada, we have an announcement. This just in. The nation of Canada has an announcement. <laughs> okay. Please stand by. Okay. Please stand by. Uh, Epcot yeah. has a new musical act for the Canada Pavilion. What? Yay. Say yes. what? It does. What was the one that, oh, why is my mind blank? What's the one that everybody loves from Canada? Oh, that, that went, went away. away. Off then... kilter? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Well, these what? people look kind of off kilter ish. You think? <laughs> no, I'm just judging. It's... I'm judging by their pictures. I'm being judgy. Yeah. Okay. It says so it's bluegrass, right? It, is bluegrass big? It big in Canada? Uh, I'm thinking, Jen. What do you call the music of the kitchen party, Newfoundland? Like Kaylee music. Yeah, it's out e- oh, east music. I'm gonna look them up. Okay, starting June 13th. That's in a couple of weeks. The mill stage at the Canada Pavilion comes alive with the music of Blueberry Grass Band, an accomplished group from Quebec. For you Americans, that's closer to the east coast of Canada. Sort of north of Maine and all your Vermont. Like around there. <laughs> <laughs> all your our top, Vermont. Your top right corner. This top right geography corner. is brought to you by. Geography. <laughs> that's fact. Rand okay. McNally. Who trans? Form French and English Canadian hits to their own festive sound. They've got people with like an upright bass, acoustic guitar, hmm. uh, banjo, there's fiddles. Think of out east fiddle music. I don't know what we call that. Can we just in do like, Canada. here, I have an idea. Okay. How about we just take Canadian that. pop music from the 80s and like have like somebody of the place. Brian like Adams. Loverboy, Lover Corey All Hart. Time. Watching uh, Loverboy today, and yeah. when you watch the video of everybody's working for the weekend and the drummer's drumming, and then it like freezes and he's like, Rah! like he's got <laughs> those weird drummer faces. I just like, I wear my sunglasses at night. Okay, <laughs> so, no, okay. so in Canada, on Celine the East Dion Coast, would... we have a lot of Celtic influence on right. the East Coast of Canada. 
And in Newfoundland and uh, Nova Scotia, those kind of places, um, they call it a kitchen party where everybody literally goes to each other's houses and stands in the kitchen and everybody brings their banjos and guitars and stuff. And it's like a kitchen party. So that yeah, looks sounds to like me, a hootenanny. This, this isn't is. them, but this is the kind of music if you can okay, hear. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is Great Big C, which is a Canadian band, but they're singing along. In case anybody was curious here, <laughs> so that's like kitchen party music. Yes. So that is the type of music that's huh. coming. It says that every concert is an undeniably joyous occasion with their upbeat tunes and the clearly cheerful rapport between the performers. Um, it's a six-person band, and they've been on Britain's Got Talent, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, and they are there for a limited time, June 13th to August 26th. You can catch them live at Epcot on the Canada Mill stage. Jen, you and I will be down there during that time. Maybe we can take a little live video. Oh, there you go. That, that would, Share yeah. the Canada experience. Share the love of the Canadian Share. experience. I'm Where looking it forward. snows 364 days a year. <laughs> it was cold today. Let it me was, tell you. Yeah. Last week it was a heat wave. And by heat wave, I mean it was in like the 90s for you Americans. And this this week is like 50s and 60s. It's not that We warm, really do it? need to get Weather Talk sponsored on this podcast. <laughs> We do. Weather chopper. Can't wait. Hold on. Stand by. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why you have to be at a chopper. I don't to give the weather. That's traffic. <laughs> it's traffic and weather together on the 8th. Oh, yeah, on you the just look out the window and you see the weather. <laughs> it's raining. Yeah. Poor Canadians. No. Uh, yes. No. Moving on. What? <laughs> What else do we have? What are we moving the new, on to? The new band. The redhead and... character. Yeah, Red. so, yes. So, yeah, so they've... West Coast again? Brought her out of the ride. West Coast huh? again. Yep, so uh, Red. Yes. That's R-E-D-D, which is the name of the new the redhead pirate. Invented. Yes. Hmm. On, uh, the Lady Pirate. The Lady Pirate on Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, will be a or Caribbean. We think or Caribbean. Yeah. However, you uh, Falcon. Tom- Falcon. Tomato. Tomato. Uh, will be a potato. We're potato. thinking more of like a street atmosphere sort of walk around character in uh, New Orleans Square or New Orleans Square at uh, Disneyland. Hmm. Uh, so be like some- Jack Sparrow. Yeah, um, it begins June eighth. Uh, and we've got some uh, pictures of the character have already been released. Those are up on the discussion boards as well. She looks good. She looks just like the new animatronic. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what she's doing. I like it. Oh, but I like it. Yeah. I like it. I think it's fine. Yeah. I always think, like, what, seeing Jack Sparrow walk around, like, he's entertaining. And well, there's I like a couple Jack. of the other yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So maybe so, it'd be nice if they interacted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think so. Oh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of animatronics, did you guys see all the videos going around of more animatronic fails this week? They, <laughs> I saw one of Buddy I feel like there's a website. Was, yeah. or, or a... was flapping, like hanging, dangling by wires, was flapping around. And then, John, you sent that one. Yeah, where uh, uh, the Thomas <laughs> Jefferson <laughs> guy, like, or whatever, is like rocking out. Like, <laughs> I actually, I went looking just before we started this podcast. I checked. There was. YouTube videos of other anim- animatronic fails. I, I'm guessing that's like a common thing because there's a lot of videos of them really having seizures, like rapidly head banging and like their whole body is shake, 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 shake. And when you posted that to us the other day, John, of the video of the guy from Spaceship Earth, right? Someone else had posted it on Twitter, and it was like a day later that so it's still act- doing they- it. No, no, no. They they um, they posted the picture and everything, and they tagged it. Dis- WDW Today, which is the official Walt Disney World account, Mm -hmm. they tagged that in there, and like a day and a half later, Walt Disney World (laughs) replied, and it was like, "Thank you for alerting us to this. We have we have notified the proper team. Notified maintenance. It's like, oh my gosh, I hope it didn't take you a day and a half (laughs) to realize what was happening." Wow. Yeah, yeah no, it, 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 it was. It's 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 the, It's the Thomas Jefferson clone. Have you guys ever noticed that? Yeah. With the hair, he's, he's yeah. sitting, he's yeah. sitting cross-legged on the ground right. with a blonde 
Yeah. Bob cut wig I mean, he's in like, a red shirt. There's certain and characters freaks. that are in every single like audio animatronic <laughs> attraction that just show up, you know, that were in Horizons or, you know, would have been in uh in the Hall of Presidents, or it's like they just took this face and it, it just shows up with different wigs in different places. Just look, yep. for, look for that. But yeah, that was. It's like, what is he anyway. doing back in, the, in that time? Yeah. You can look for that video online. It's funny to watch. It's kind of hey. scary. <laughs> it's it's kind of like those nightmare movies where the the robots take over and stuff like that yeah and then there's or there's a malfunction have in the you future. seen westworld right exactly 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 <gasps> exactly so uh disney jr's closing Jason? yes <laughs> Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Moving along to the next yes. thing. Moving along with that abrupt segue. I, I um, so I, I don't know how to with, get uh, from younger that, children that yes. uh, greatly enjoyed uh, Disney Junior Live on stage. Uh, it is closing. Um, it will have its last performances September first of 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, then they announced the show that's replacing it, which is the Disney Junior Dance Party. Uh, which is a interactive concert hosted by Finn Fiesta and a DJ named DJ. That is D E E J A Y. Um, and then the various yeah. characters come out. Um, hmm. They left out of the announcement entirely, but this sounds like it will be identical to the one they added at uh, Disney California Adventure. Um, maybe was that over? Bad Hatter thing. Like, no, uh, they they removed their Disney Junior live on stage and replaced it with a show by the same name as this one. Uh, so they didn't really confirm that, but it's assumed it'll be the same or a very similar show to what's out there on the on the West Coast. So, um, hmm. not sure that's gonna have the same appeal. It sounds like they're dropping some of the. I've never actually seen it, but it sounds like there'd be a lot of more storytelling in the original show than in a interactive concert yeah Um, the original show i mean my kids you know my kids are 10 and 12 now so we haven't been for a while but we pretty much went every single visit for years and years and years and what the original show is was based on the most popular shows at on the disney channel there'd be usually there were like four different stories then that revolved around at the very end Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So, like, when my son was really little, and now, now I'm dating myself and my son, Bear in the Big Blue House was just leaving, and, like, Bear was there. And then Bear left, and they had Little Einsteins, and then Handy Manny, and then um, my, my son the new, went, Doug the new was princess. There. Oh, um, Avalon or... Uh, Avalor? Yeah, I think they've had that one, and they had, Prince, you know, Princess Sophia. And, and so... But there'd always be a story tied around there. And it was actually, it was a really fun show because they'd have kind of, you know, the different puppet type animatronics come out and there'd always be a fun cast member. And they'd have a little dancing in between there. But there were actually stories with a point that all tied together mm-hmm. at the end. A dance party now, I mean, whatever. It's a way to get out of the heat and let your kids run around for a bit. But, ugh. yeah. And just, like, come on, we're better. Dance than- partied out. I mean, yeah. that's kind of my thing. It's it's like, hey, we need an event. Let's do a dance party. Yeah. Just throw a few characters out and, and free, cheap. Enough's yeah. enough. Flashing lights, yeah. bubble machine. There better be a lot <laughs> of chairs and benches for parents. <laughs> yeah. No, you just sit on the floor. Yay, I remember you just sit on the floor party. there. No, you? there was a couple benches, but uh, if your kids are going to run around and dance, I'm just sitting. I'm not dancing. <laughs> I'm putting my feet up. Oh my. Some lazy boys in there. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that seems to be the, the solution to everything. When when you're not sure what to do, just start a dance party. I mean, yeah. they did it. They <laughs> kind of. I mean, well, I mean, they did it. Yeah, or yeah. A diaper dash. But um, it, it, I mean, they did it behind. What was it? You know, uh, over by. Tower of Terror wasn't there like a hall or something for a while that they did sort of a dance party. Oh, I think when I was there's Alice in Wonderland yeah. dance yeah. party. Okay, something. so I'm not losing my brains. Like I remember yeah. that. I remember going by that. It was short lived. Um, yeah. I, I mean, you've got the Atlantic Dance Hall, 
where they now it's you just got a DJ and a dance party over there. They're really not sure what to do with that space over there on uh, in uh, on Boardwalk, and uh, yeah, it's it's just it. We we got. Well, nothing. it seems like every nighttime event that they do, you know, the pay events, the not pay events. There's right. always a dance party, right? As some it's, part of it, it's, always. It's, it's, it's kind of a it's an easy yeah. like you said a bubble machine, some lights, and uh, a couple speakers, and you're set to there roll. There you go. Boom! Instant party. Yeah. <laughs> it is, <laughs> but yeah. So I'm glad, you know what, that my kids got to experience it when they were younger, because yeah. we we used to really enjoy the shows. Playhouse Disney stuff. Yeah, yeah Playhouse Disney. Yeah, but Disney uh, Junior. But... How much like everything, it runs its course. So it does. It's time. It's time, people. It's time. You guys want to do some questions? Yeah. 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 You think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling it. We've got a we've got a bunch of them. On, um, you have some. I have Carolyn. You probably have some. I've got some. On I um, side of things too. I went around to all our social medias and I screenshotted every question we sent. Okay, yeah. including the question, including the live video that I did just beforehand. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm going to let you play the host of this rather than me. You've got the big microphone, the big long microphone, just like on Match Game. You going to put the special effect on when you talk? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> okay. Paula Marinelli Mills says, okay. if yes. Disney does not change the Halloween stage show this year, do you think the party's getting stale? Is the value still there for return party goers? Thoughts? I, I have. I thoughts. would say no. You say no that I the value is like not I there. I went to the Halloween party once for right. Intercot 15. Right. That was yep. when we went. Right. Yeah. I don't think I need to go again. I've I been really twice. Don't. I went that time and I went another time with my kids and I'm like, yeah, I'm done. I d- I've done it. Check it off the bucket list. I'm, I, I don't, don't need to pay all this extra money to go to a five-hour party. That's I've done it once. Anyway. I mean, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I think. For me, the biggest problem is just the crowds. If it was a crowd limited yeah. event, I would be willing to spend the money to go and and do it. But the problem is that it isn't, and it seems to be pretty crowded. And so you have to enjoy, you know, being in more crowds. And unless I mean, you can go and collect candy and go around and ride some rides. But the the big thing used to be you'd go and. Uh, You'd get on some extra rides. You'd see some cool characters. There'd be a great parade, and you know the fireworks would be kind of cool, and it was worth it. Now I'm not. I I don't know whether I would probably at this point the repeat. And to see the cool characters, you got to line up for an hour of your five hours to go and see Jack. And and, it's tough because I really love the I love the uh, Halloween parade, the Booty You. Thing mm-hmm. and the whole I love that parade too. Um, so it's it, it's hard for me, and I do like the fireworks. I like the surround the, you know, the fireworks yeah. that are shot off from the different locations, um, and it's much more immersive when you see that in the parks than when you're outside of the parks. I've seen that from atop of the Contemporary and things yeah. like that. Yeah, but uh, I'm I'm kind of split. I'd say you know what, if you haven't been for about five years or something, maybe I'd say go. If if you did it like a couple of years ago, I'd say you know what, probably, yeah. you, you can wait a while. Yeah, do yeah. something do something else with your money. Go go on a go on a behind the scenes tour, scenes tour, or do something do something different that you haven't done. Maybe go out beyond Disney and look at the rest of Orlando. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and spend a hundred bucks go with, there. Yeah, to me, it's a your your. It's one of those your mileage may vary type of things. Yep. Do you like to watch the same thing? I mean, some people can ride the same ride over and over again and that's your favorite ride and you love it you love yep. the same experience mm-hmm. but if you don't and you've seen it once you've seen it twice and it's the same thing yep. then i yeah. don't think it's worth it if it's not hitting your buttons for you it's true um okay well we've got kind of a two part question for two people two part melstone said what's your favorite souvenir and christy trevitt said piggybacking off of mel's post what's the best way to show off your souvenir collection do you guys collect souvenirs used to used to what did you collect yes uh i mean (laughs) i I, I mean through the years i mean there have been different things but um 
I, I like one of the expensive things I collect. I mean, is can, you guys can see like on the wall over there. I've got yeah. a Walt Disney World twenty five sign that was hung on Main Street. I, I collected in park item kind of stuff like that. I've got a test track sign that was from the opening of test track. Um, I've got silly stuff like that, but then I also got into collecting, um, concept art, which is a really big thing of mine, which is the other, the other end of, <laughs> of stuff is, uh, one of my favorite artists, Eric Robeson, uh, just did a ton of concept art in the style of Herb Ryman, who was the guy who used to do the, um, the concept art for all the attractions and things like that. So, yeah. Um, I, I've collected that kind of thing and, you know, pins, I think over the years, I still have a huge collection that I should get rid of. And if you were to look at my shelves, I have stuff from nearly every press event that I've been to over the years as well. So silly stuff like that. But I, um, I always, I, I mean, I've had pins and I've had like the little vinyl mations, but not enough to call it a collection one or two or something. But the thing that I like, and I do it every year is I buy the attraction poster calendars and they're kind of hard to find I've always gone after the beginning of the new year we always have a trip in March and if you go to what is that uh, outlet store in the mall in, a, in Orlando where they sell off Disney products <laughs> yeah. they always have them in there for like Disney deep discounts like, no it's like cast it's because it's, it's March. Disney Character Warehouse. Yeah, March. Character Warehouse. Yeah, it's yeah, that's Character it. Warehouse. Thank you. There you go. So I go there and I get the calendars. They're like half price because it's already March, but that's fine. And each page of the calendar is like an eleven by fourteen on <laughs> thick, like thick watercolor paper, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a replica of the park posters. And then the I mean, very teeny tiny at the bottom is the date, but that part is perforated and you can fold that and then you have like this 11 by 17 perfect print so i have gotten those the past couple of years and then i take my favorite ones and all around my this is crazy i people come over and i don't even remember that they're there anymore people come over and must look at me like i'm a nut but it, my dining room is full of all these attractions. dining posters. room my dining room I call really it dining plan yeah so you have a so, haunted mansion bathroom have, yeah. No, that's a gent house. Oh, wait. That's me. Wrong so sister. That's Sorry. Weird okay. <laughs> guest bathroom. Yeah, that's go weird. Here. What kind of well, a haunted? That's kind of No, strange. it's awesome. No. So <laughs> my dining room has that. And then I have a giant, I don't even know the size. It's got to be like three feet square at least. But uh, it's um an original map of the first maps of like the Magic Kingdom. I don't know what how you say that. Like a park They map? had these souvenir park maps. Right, but it was funny little cartoony kind of drawings with right. the little train, and there was no Tomorrowland or anything on there yet. And yeah, and it's huge. And Mike found it on eBay or something, and it was it's kind of yellowing because it's old from the seventies. And I had it all framed up nice and matted. You framed so, it, yeah. yeah. I still I, I, to this day I still have it, and I don't know where I'm going to put it. And I really wish I had a bigger wall somewhere here. But I on eBay, I another eBay purchase. eBay was dangerous for a while in my life, where I was buying some serious Disney stuff. But um, somebody had uh, blueprints of the Magic Kingdom. Um, you could go online and you'd buy one of actually of Disneyland Park rather, I think, and. It's it's a blueprint of the whole park, and it's like huge, like monster size, huge. And I, I want to get that mounted at some point. I have it rolled up in a tube somewhere. Um, but that's a cool thing too. Like, you, you, you can find some neat stuff on there. Yeah. If you ever are bored? Go on. Just Google uh, John Stamos Disney Collection. Good that one. guy. I mean, he's got money to burn. Really? He's got old the original disneyland sign he's got a oh a, like the one out, that was out front yeah, yeah he's got a dumbo like car from the ride he's got a mr toad's wild ride car he's got everything that guy's collection well everybody knows i have the old monorail in my backyard right <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool <laughs> what do you what do you all collect the the rest of the crew 
I've got well, probably my favorite souvenir, uh, kind of similar to what Carolyn mentioned. I think it's the 1961 map of Disneyland that's kind of famous because it shows Edison Square and Liberty Street, which they, of course, never actually built. Um, so I've got that framed in my one hallway. And then I just collect a lot of other like little smaller things that are in that curio cabinet behind me that you all can see. To be honest, I don't collect very much, but I am trying to theme all of my bathrooms as <laughs> Disney themes. <laughs> so the powder room inside the front doors of my house is a uh, Haunted Mansion theme. Okay. So I have the little so, stretching room paintings. Yeah. I have all four of them that I bought, and they're all hanging around the room. I have. Uh, I was going to say, does the do you, toilet oh, you know go down trying? or does the ceiling go up? <laughs> Be I, there and like, there's even like on top of the medicine cabinet there's like a black raven who stares at oh. you as you're using the toilet i had this mcdonald's toy that i gave jen when the uh, haunted mansion movie with eddie murphy came out they had happy meal toys and i actually had this thing it came on like a li- plastic but it looked like a little wooden stand and a green globe with a clear plastic front and there was a light that you could turn on and it it had like um it's what like the Haunted Mansion, the faces mm. in the library. Yeah, the faces in the library that are cut out, but they're cut into the wall. But as right. you go by... It's no, they're like not. Following you. <laughs> okay, it's that, but it's Madame Leota's head. And it, when you turn off the lights and you turn the, the light on this little globe thing, it glows green. And it has that total perfect effect where you move and she's following you. And it was a Happy Meal toy, and I kept it all these years. And now I, it's on my bathroom counter. counter. To Jen's bathroom <laughs> counter. And, and I also, I also cross-stitched her a cute little thing that says yes. Sweet Tomb, and it has a little bat on it. So that's well, I like on the that. wall. I like that. That's and my basement bathroom personal. is a Fort Wilderness theme. So I bought a Fort Wilderness framed picture. Well, actually, it wasn't framed. I framed it later. It's a Fort Wilderness themed photo, so it's on the wall. Yeah. She needs more country bear stuff down there. And my bathroom and my ensuite is more of an animal kingdom theme. Hmm. A kid's bathroom. I don't know. That one's kind of a work in progress. I've been like it's about fishy All thing. right. So what What else do you guys collect? <laughs> yeah, Lord, we're Take gonna, a tour we're of Jen's bathroom. Why don't you just post <laughs> a video <laughs> tour to, to Intercut? I mean, seriously. You should. Holy moly. That would be <laughs> amazing. ideas with Jen. Okay, we got another question here from someone named Shane Wood, and he says, with Lyft partnering with Disney, why would you pay $25 for on-property or 150 oh, to... wait. And- wait, we missed... We forgot half the question, though. No. Of the Latin- yeah, we did. What's the best way to to, uh, to house it? Oh, put it in your bathroom. Which, oh, well, there so, we I go. Mean, obviously, well, no, that's one think, of them. But make it into your, you just, into your daily life. Like, you don't need to have a, a cabinet necessarily. You don't have to think of collections as being for a cabinet. Yes, there are some things that you have to put in there, but you can be a collector and use the stuff. It doesn't have to be a knickknack. Well, I, I'm thinking, based on what I'm seeing, the answer is you should have a beautiful glass display case. Yeah, yeah. well, that's it. <laughs> that, is that the correct answer, John? It's from IKEA, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I have yeah, the correct answer, or it would be that, like a, a shelf. Oh, well, yeah. on the shelf. Do you yeah. guys? Do, can you see? I've got a couple yeah. of shelves. You've got full a of monorail. Stuff. It looks like. Yeah. Mono- yeah. Or if you're me, you buy things that you think you're going to collect, and you put them in a bag, and they're stuck in the back of your closet because you're going to do something with them someday. Yeah, and you have to have Pedro from south of the border in there somewhere <laughs> too, which I do. I have him. But you know, I I like have. I think for me, it's and I think the common thread here is out where people can see it, right? I, where, I feel wherever, like there's no point spending be. my money if it's just going to, I don't know. Sit, I want to sit in your it. closet. You want to yeah. you want to have it out, you know, sitting on your desk. I see it. Yeah, but mine working. will be mint later when I go sell that's it on. That's true. On that is Yeah, true. No, that's true. That's true. Never so, opened. So there are, yeah, there are things like my, again, my Cinderella castle pillow, which I'm going to put on eBay at some point that, that says, uh, sweet, S-U-I-T-E, dreams. And, and mm-hmm. so if you stayed in the castle suite, you got one. So I'm going to put that up there someday. Yeah. Never oh. been slept on. Never been slept on, and it's sitting, like Cindy said, in the closet. I have I have about three or four bags full of stuff. 
again, collected over the years that, uh, so anyway, yeah, there we go. Um, moving on. Sorry, Carolyn. Okay, so, no, that's sorry. I missed did, that. Cindy, did well, you say what you had? No, she, Cindy didn't even say what she, what did you, what do you collect? Anything? What do you collect? I don't kill. I like, I go through phases, you know, my kids went through a vinylmation phase and we did those for a while. And then I, we were doing Tsum Tsums for a while, but then they started coming out with them every other week and they sold yeah. them in Target. And, yeah. you know, yeah. when they were like limited, they were kind of cool. And then we got tired of those. Then yeah. I had my slight Dooney and Burke and um, Harvey Purse problem for a while. <laughs> um, and that kind of got to be too expensive of a souvenir book. habit. So I've toned back on that one. So those are in the closet too, unused. Hmm. Several of them. Just waiting. Um, You're going to make a mint one day. Maybe. And then. <laughs> I thought I was going to make a mint off my Disney yeah. classic collection stuff too. And the values tanked in the it last five It just depends years. on what. Yeah. Some of the stuff last i mean the the only thing that i probably do consistently is when i go to the events like i will buy the pass holder pins for flower and garden and the pass holder pins for food and wine and that sort of stuff and then of course the last two years with everything closing i got all of the closing t-shirts you know for like um ellen's energy adventure and the great movie ride so for me there just there has to be something different about it because i don't know it's I'm not big into collecting and displaying, so there needs to be some significance to it for me to get it. I'm with you. And and I think uh, that that's where I'm ending up right now, which is I think things have to be significant and something I would want to display at this point mm -hmm. um, in order for me to purchase a souvenir. I, I just don't do it anymore. Other than maybe replacing a baseball cap or something, you know. If I'm going to use it like a mug, yeah, I got rid of a bunch of old, crummy mug so now i'm i'm allowing myself to go replace to get the a mug. new mug yeah yeah i'm trying to get away from buying junk i have too much clutter anyway on to the next question all right so sorry shane wood uh with lyft partnering with disney why would you pay 25 dollars for on property or 150 dollars to mco for a minivan when a regular lyft ride is a third of the price you still have to use the lyft app to order the van I've done numerous rides on property, and all my riders say the same thing. Is it just to be part of the Disney experience? What are your thoughts? So I'm, I'm assuming Shane, obviously, is a Lyft driver. <clears throat> but he makes and a good I point. have to be out of this one because I never, I always have my car at Disney because there's no other way for me to get there. So I would never take I, Lyft, so I have no opinion on this one. I, I, I only used Lyft the one time when we were there for ICOT 20. I've never used Uber. I've never used Lyft except for that one time. And it was actually quite enjoyable. Like the driver was nice and mm -hmm. had a good conversation yeah. with him. And I would totally do that. And if it's the same as the minivan one, I'm totally paying the cheaper one. Yeah, I don't I don't see a point to having polka dots and paying extra. The only advantage I see is I did have a bad experience with a non-Disney rideshare app individual where they had no idea where they were going. Uh, so I think you're a little bit more guaranteed to get where you're going with the Disney person, but certainly I would assume most of the people in the driving in that area know where they're going. I would certainly I just had a, hope so. Yeah. I'm sure that was the exception, not the rule, but yeah. yes, this particular individual got very, very lost. <laughs> and it took <laughs> thankfully I left with plenty of time, but I don't know where they and, were going. And you the, the, the bigger question is Jason, you didn't know where you were going in order to go yeah, <laughs> left here, left here. Yes, that was not helping. We went into the into the Magic Kingdom instead of the Magic Kingdom resort area. Oh dear. And, and somehow he was given instructions to turn around and we somehow ended up uh, not on, I think, a public access road. And it was, <laughs> <laughs> there were some, there were some other there, issues. There were people I with, was, people with guns coming stuff out like and that, you don't, step away. You don't have to pay extra. Like it, when it's you true. order a Lyft or an Uber, it's like, yes. this is how much it's going to cost that no matter true. what. It was just the, just the time from it. So I, I feel like there is, some, although very small risk, that with those you may get someone who that's their first time driving in that area or, or there something is, like that. But I can see somebody wanting to go with the minivan thing only if little Jenny and Carolyn here, you know, when we were getting into the lift at the boardwalk that night to go home and we were standing out front for my cot 20 and 
we were standing there with Nick and we neither of us had ever used Lyft or Uber before. So little <laughs> little town girls yeah, like good for, how do you know that the guy that's coming to pick you up isn't like a mass murderer? He could be a killer. Scaring us. <laughs> Nick that was there with waiting with us. We're back friend. to this again. Like, okay. Yeah. If you if you see um, us in this car and we are driving away, just know we'll text you when we get back to let you know that we got home safely. The, so maybe if there's like little town point. people that are nervous about that, yeah. then you they feel, feel safer. The, they feel safer if it was sanctioned by Disney. That's, the I'm the one other thing that I think we brought up before too is that the, the value consideration is probably true for just a regular Lyft car sedan. Right. Um, but I think they said you know if you definitely need car seats, uh, that can be a little bit trickier where that's guaranteed on minivan. Or if you need some sort of um, accessible uh, car for a ECV or a wheelchair, again, I think the minivans are all guaranteed to be set up for that in some way, um, where the uh, regular Lyft car may not be. And I think you have to go to the higher uh, paying Lyft vehicles for for that. So um, th- there are probably certain scenarios where it makes more sense. But yes, in general you're probably paying more for polka dots. All, All right. right. Next. Learning. Uh, John Menson says, okay. Hello, John. for the runners, this was on Twitter, by the way. On the Twitters? Uh, hmm. His name is at Mr. Snork, which I really like. I like that name. <laughs> Mr. Snork. Hello, Mr. Snork. <laughs> for the runners, opinions on virtual running shorts. I can argue both ways. Disney money grab because you're basically buying medals. Or great intro to run Disney and a fun motivator between races. I like them and see them as something fun between races since I'm running anyway. What do you guys think? Um, well, I guess first I would say isn't any virtual race kind of just there to make money? Not even just Disney. You know, you get your you get your medal, but they're either going to be some of them are donating some money to charities, but obviously the companies that run these things wouldn't do them if they weren't making money off of them. Right. Um, I think that for people who really want a Disney medal, I mean, yes, Disney's making benefit, but they really want a Disney medal and they don't feel capable of making the Disney pace. It's not a bad thing to be out there. Now I will say as I have no plenty of people who have done the Disney shorts, I have never done it because I am not super big into virtual races. Yeah. My, myself because like every now and then I'll do one because it's a special theme or it seems really fun but I have a hard time getting into it that I'm actually racing as opposed to just like doing a training run right um yeah, but it, I yeah, I think it's motive it's motivational right. to people and maybe it helps Disney a little bit that if those people get really motivated doing those 5k's um at home that mm-hmm. they're a little bit more prepared when they come to actually do them at Disney. Now, the one I do find really interesting this year, which isn't the Disney shorts, is because of the whole situation with Disneyland um, and not having the runs there, how they chose to keep the Kessel Run Challenge to have that extra medal by introducing the virtual half marathon to go with the Disney half marathon, which is kind of interesting. I look at it like a souvenir. I'm yeah, buying a souvenir. If the metal looks cool, then sure, I'll do it. And let's be honest, probably there's people out there that buy it but never do the actual run because who's checking that? You get the metal either yeah. way. So really, you're buying a souvenir. And if you're into that, cool. That's fine. It's another collection. Mm. Right. Like to collect them. So yeah. you want to get all of them, right? So. It's a money grab for your collection. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to say that the reason why I do racing is is kind of um, it's the point of after you've trained by yourself to actually be with others. Like it's it's kind yeah, of one yeah. of those things that it's the communal aspect of the race that kind of makes it interesting. Now, granted, you are an individual, but you're part of a wider community that's doing it. It's a little a little harder, I think, um, to do it. Just virtually, I think uh, to the motivation factor. When when I did a 
I think we as a site did the Pi Day 5K mm-hmm. one yeah, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the only one that I've done. And I was <laughs> kind of like, I was like, ah, was I got to like, do uh, this. Like, I need to do it on this yeah, day. And then, and then like, uh, someone that's going to be there, you feel more accountable to right. do it. Yeah. yeah. So I show up, I do it. So to me, agreed, I, I, you know, I almost at the point I like getting cool medals. By the way, I mean that's always a nice reward for doing a right race. But um, I, I, yeah, I feel a little bit too much like I'm buying a medal, and yeah. and it's part of something I should be doing anyway. So, but but I yeah. you know I again I can see the point that there are people who this is good and and they dig it. So whatever. I mean, or maybe they just yeah. can't get down ever for a run Disney that race maybe. and they want to be part right. of it. So, I mean, yep. I totally see it both ways, but, but I, I just, if you get a chance yeah. running a, running a race with the group of people, I mean, yeah. I, yep. you, anybody, most, any five K's, like if you just walk at a moderately above a walking pace, you are good to go and you're yeah. not going to get know, swept just, and, there's a real feeling of community too. There'll be people that you're Find like, oh my some gosh, that's like a yep. marathon runner. Oh my gosh, I'm going to be so slow next to them. Yep. And you'll see them whipping past you and they'll like high five you on their way. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm one of them. I'm yeah. part of the group. All right. <laughs> yeah. so, so I say, you know, try, try a local 5K or something and just do it and just uh, find a friend. And if it means you walk the whole thing, it's okay. Yep. Yep. And I, and I endorse fun. that too yep. because, and I'm not putting Run Disney down at all. I think it can be a marvelous experience. I've enjoyed all my Run Disneys, but if you're doing the virtual races because you can't do it, yeah, I go with John. Do a local, try a local race. The local races you're going to find are usually um, so much less expensive oh, than yeah. Run Disney oh, yeah. for yep. a 5K. I mean, you can find them for like $25 and yep. fine. There are a lot of, make sure you're looking for a legitimate you know, racing director who's like run races before. Right. We had one locally where somebody was like they're brand new at running races and it was a disaster. But find a legitimate <laughs> one that looks fun. There are a lot of fun races out there that you can do that have cool medals. And yeah, it's not a Disney medal, but you know, you're getting out there with a the group and experiencing it and yep. building up to being able to do that Disney race sometime. Because I know a 16 minute pace isn't super fast like if you're a runner runner but if you're getting in shape it's a 60 minute pace can be hard for people yep Uh, the other thing is you're also in a lot of cases giving back to your community and maybe also meeting a few new friends who you know you would otherwise not say but a lot of the local races um you typically have some sort of cause tied to them um so that's a cool thing knowing that your money (laughs) is actually going back to support where you live so next question Okay, we've got a whole bunch more. I'm going to just do one more. Yeah, we're going to have to more. do some, some rapid fire, maybe. <clears throat> yeah. We think we're going to just okay. do one more. Just one more, and because Patty, love her, she, uh, but her question is huge. It's like a talking about what will we do for a fourth part, or a fifth gate part. Yeah, I saw that one. Maybe we can take that away as a topic to do on a podcast because yes. yes. I, I read hers, yeah. and it's an excellent question, Patty, because you know what your question is, but I think it's something we like I'll need to read over and think about as opposed to doing off the top of our heads. Like when yes. there's not much news. No one yeah. Knows. I got you. But, but I think it's an aw- it would be an awesome topic for I, podcast. Yeah. Can, can I just pick one real quick? Yeah, do it. And then we can do yours because this one's short. Yep. Um, what was the one about, uh, what would you do? Oh, ideas for tricking people into trying Beverly. <laughs> yes. I love That's that. Eugenie. I like that. From, from Christy Trevitt. Come and say, here, try it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you have to try this one. It's really great. <laughs> I have a Beverly t-shirt. Do so I, like, why would I buy the t-shirt? If it wasn't the best <laughs> thing <laughs> ever. It's you you fill up two ever. cups. You fill up one next to the Beverly, and that's what you drink, and then you hand them the one from the <laughs> Beverly. Uh, let's try Beverly. This this will probably be good. Yeah. It's just Sprite. <laughs> It's, it's like Italian Sprite. Try it. Have, yeah. But you got to like one, two, three. Let's just chug the that or you, you fill it up at the same thing and you just put it in your mouth and you just wait for them to swallow <laughs> yeah, and then you put it back up. in the cup. <laughs> yeah, like, you try the old look over there. I'm not drinking that I actually, crap. There's, there's the, the pineapple Fanta and then what's yes. the watermelon from Japan? Yeah, oh, I, like, I like that one. I like Smart the watermelon. watermelon? Yeah. Yes. I would veggie just, beta. Still there? What about veggie beta? Veggie beta. 
Yeah. I liked Vegeta. Vegeta. Yeah, that one's okay. The several <laughs> of them you can now get other places on property. By the way, like yeah. there's, I think two of them, two of the ones from Africa are actually at Animal Kingdom. Okay. I in bought the Harambe pineapple Market. Fanta in like a giant cup on Main Street USA in one of the little popcorn kiosks. They sell the pineapple yeah. Fanta. It's good. I yeah. wanted the cup, but oh my god, it was like three liters of pineapple Fanta, and I couldn't bring it into any ride, and it was so full, so, so I ended up dumping half of that's it. That's uh, six gallons in Imperial. No. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Whatever. No, that's so, not the conversion from liters to gallons. <laughs> no, I think you double it and add 40. Two that's liters, what Bob and Doug used liters to say. would be half a gallon. Um, okay, so last question. So last question comes quick. from Don. With all the add-on Disney is doing, example, paying for parking, what mm-hmm. would be a premium add-on you wouldn't mind paying for to make your stay more enjoyable? E-ride so night. You would pay if for it, an if, e-ride if it, night. If it came back again, yeah, and the way they did it before, without a doubt. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't think about it, it especially at the price they used it. But, I mean, for a reasonable price, limited capacity, all the mm-hmm. good rides open, I would do that. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I would do I'd, that. Um, having almost done that at Disneyland here yeah. last month, I would say yes. That was, I think, that was a bit unintentional because it didn't sell out. But yeah, that was pretty incredible to be in a park practically by yourself like that. Yep. I'm trying to think of stuff that I would pay for, but that doesn't exist, and it does exist, but I won't pay for it. But I wish it was just cheaper. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you can have a water park ticket added on to your park ticket right and i would i would pay for like oh let's have like a water but no it's too expensive <laughs> right. like i would like i would pay for stuff if it was cheaper <laughs> yeah it exactly really counts, but... is what i'm trying to say <laughs> yeah i you There's know a lot of things that i would pay for if they were cheaper <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah that kind like of I would goes for against dinner. I would pay for, for deluxe. That it was a value price. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> like, buy a four day park hopper uh, and get, get I think, a. I think the get a week box get a, get a dinner for your whole family at Victoria and for twenty I think, bucks. I would pay for that. Yeah, we'll see. But even that is a problem with what I suggested because you know if they they actually did it the way they did it back then and they limited the capacity that the ticket would be like yeah, 200 bucks yeah. instead of like the $20 that it was back then. So I, I mean, I paid 99. For I'll tell you what thing. I would pay for, which they haven't done. They, the monorail party. Oh yeah. We the, had our own. The party on the <laughs> monorail. Yeah. With the disco <laughs> ball and open bar and it would just cruise around yeah. for an hour. I would pay for that. I guess one other thing I would add would be like if they did some type of like if they brought back just in a very select way like the Adventurers Club, the immersive kind of storytelling entertainment. Yep. I, th- I think that kind of went off the rails a little bit with uh, kind of how they started to present it there towards the end. Yep. But I think that's something they could bring back as a as a premium experience. I know what I would pay for. Adventurers Club okay. Resort. There you go. I would pay for some. Buddy in a golf cart to pick me up at the back of the Magic Kingdom, drive me through all back roads to my car at the ticket and transportation. Oh funny. my god, I would She's pay for so that funny. to avoid Carolyn. the rush at the end of the night. No, to not have to cram down Main Street oh, and try and get on too. a monorail. Is it, didn't and they try offer and that? Was, well, no, they, they, was, I was going to say that they that took it service? away. It was the park, the park to park yeah. service oh, okay. was there. Yeah, but no, Carolyn's idea is to your car. They, yeah. I car gotta get be... my car in the ticket and transportation center, but I don't want to have to cram down Main Street at the end of the night. Just get on a rollers, trail, get on a tram. No, it would be too much money. They just never like be able to pick me up it. in your golf cart at like behind Space Mountain and take me back to my car. I'll give you fifty bucks, no questions asked. Fifty <laughs> bucks. <laughs> It'd be more like but you're scared about Lyft drivers. Be more <laughs> Some like shady lot. guy rolls up in his it's, golf cart. You got the money. <laughs> All right. So once Why again, does that have to be a golf bucks. cart specifically, by think, the way? I think well, my answer was the correct oh, one. Can get around quick kind of vehicle. What about one of those bicycles that six oh, people pedal yeah, like up? That. 
we could do that. Like something where you don't have to be on roads. It can take me on sidewalks if it has to. Oh, it's like an ATV. Yeah. <laughs> Get me back to my car so I don't have to take the monorail and the tram. Flying car. I would pay for that service. Flying car could be coming soon. Uh, I think we're done with questions. We are. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm not sure we really answered that last one, but I'm not sure there is a good answer at this point. No. So. Well, we had a no, couple but... good ones. Yeah, but Besides again, the, the Carolyn's that... tricycle with a basket on the front of it. <laughs> the ET ride. <laughs> the, the, the real ET the ride. The bike Just takes bring off. Bring me your moped. And... We'll all pile nope. on top of that. Get me to the car. Oh, goodness. They're kind of like going in my uh, convertible. Yes. <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the back of that little thing. Hey, yes. Bond's like, I don't know if you're going to fit back there. Drive We're faster, fit. it's rain. <laughs> we won't feel it. Oh, God. <sighs> anyway, thanks to everybody for submitting questions. Uh, you know, if there were some that we didn't use, uh, we'll we'll do our best to, to kind of circle back on them, but uh, especially the good ones. Or you can just suggest them again the next time we uh, go to tape. So thanks for being part of the show. Um, other stuff quickly while we close because uh, we're at an uh, hour hour and 50 minutes right yep. now or so. Uh, the Magic Kingdom is adding a third fireworks dessert party. Uh, so it, it already started uh, on one. May 28th. Not, not, not one, not two, but, but three. Three. Not it is the, three. <laughs> three. It is the after fireworks dessert party. Ah, okay. Ah, so huh. you watch the fireworks from the Plaza Garden, gotcha. which, in my opinion, is the better place to watch it than sure. the terrace, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially okay. for this current incarnation of the fireworks. And then after everyone is trying to uh, cram out of the park like a sardine. When I'm on the moped. On the moped. Um, <laughs> you go up like to the too. terrace and have the dessert party then. Uh, so it's kind of a different option. Uh, there were some concerns about how many people are they now putting into that plaza garden viewing area. That is not exactly clear. Or if it is the same one. Because I think when I did it for ICOT 20, it was the dessert party plus fast pass. We're all in the same hmm. garden area, I believe. Um, but honestly, it was not like full. Um, I don't know if I wanted it to be much fuller. Um, since it was a you know a paid experience, but it uh, I could see them adding a few more people to that without it being too much of a inconvenience. So that has started. Interesting. Um, another quick take: the Animal Kingdom now has two new banshees for you to collect. We we're talking about collecting souvenirs. If you're collecting banshees, uh, there is a new bioluminescent one. Ooh. Which asterisk is just colored like the bioluminescent oh, plants wait, wait, and apparently what? does not glow in the dark. What? That's, that, that's what it appears. Then it's um, not it bioluminescent. Can I point right, out the is, obvious are, then at that point? I mean, it is a bioluminescent landscape does, inspired banshee. Uh, doesn't everything uh, glow in black light? So it would glow if you had uh, black. Isn't that how the bioluminescent uh, stuff works? That Animal Kingdom is all black light? Well, no, they're Pandoran plants from the planet. Oh, my so, mistake. <laughs> obviously. Um, if it does, if it actually is bioluminescent, they've the definitely, <laughs> they definitely buried the lead here by not advertising that. But huh. <laughs> Should we market that? It glows. Nah, no one wants to know about that. Don't do it. And then the, uh, the other one, which was the one they introduced for the 20th anniversary... So, of course, when you think of Disney's Animal Kingdom and everything it's accomplished in the last 20 years, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Bar. I'm going to say moss. I always yes. think moss. When Hashtag I think of animal... moss wall, for some inexplicable reason, was selected what? as the symbol. That, that is what the 20th anniversary Banshee <laughs> is inspired by, is the moss wall. You <laughs> can't make this up. The moss wall Banshee. You know how last podcast we were talking about the purple wall yeah, and the bubble gum wall? I know the moss the wall. wall. I've seen it. I don't even know where it is. Yeah. It's I, in I've, Pandora. Yeah, I saw so it. It's in Pandora. I, I know what slightly, talking about. But yeah, it's, it's a green banshee with purple markings. So obviously that's the He doesn't moss have wall. moss on him? 
No. Not no. for <laughs> the moss wall banshee does not have moss and the bioluminescent banshee doesn't glow. Now it would so. be cooler if you had the banshee and like the you remember when you used to have you be able to buy the little topiaries that you would grow yep. in your house? So like, <laughs> chia pets. Right. Like the chia pets essentially. Yeah. But the, I mean you could buy them <laughs> at Disney. Yeah. So it would be cooler if you could have a, a ba- banshee and it would grow moss. Or you could just buy like a little clay wall and it grows moss. Could you? And it's or, you or you could just moss put it outside here in Hilton Head and it would and just grow moss anyway. Yeah. It just green stuff all over it. So, hmm, interesting. <laughs> That's fascinating. It is, isn't it? I'm not really sure what to do with that. Explain the explain the one day ticket. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Um, Can he? Well, there's there's really no explanation that I think can fully cover that. <laughs> but uh, all about uh, about a month ago, Disney introduced a brand new one day ticket hmm. that is aimed at the large population of guests that wake up one day and decide, you know what, I'm going to go to Walt Disney World tomorrow, but I hadn't bought a ticket yet. Right. Um, so there are they, people like next that. day there are less than there used uh, to be, but but is a it is a next day ticket only one day ticket uh, for available at all four parks that comes with pre selected fast pass plus reservations when you buy it. Hmm. Um, so so I'll get like the mine train then. Adventures, no. So no. Like the, oh, show. No. no, no, no. Pandora, no, no Pandora. You're getting you're getting. Uh, turtle talk with Crush. <laughs> and journey yeah. into imagination. Huh. Um, I believe Man, the best up. one probably was at Animal Kingdom uh, that had all three shows. So that probably well, tells you, like you shows, how the yeah. If you like shows, it's not terrible. But mm-hmm. I think most of us know how Fast Pass works for shows. Um, but that should tell you what the other ones are. Well, let me just tell like. you: you want the ticket sales to to take off and people will be buying that ticket a lot more include some higher caliber rides on it i think in concept actually it's not a horrible idea really because it, it no, kind of caters. Just, it, it, yeah it, well i, I mean, think it, it would work really well for school groups in florida because usually this yeah. is what happens with the school group like i mean and this is probably going to come across as florida problems but you know we do a lot of Hashtag. field trips <laughs> right. to the parks and what generally happens is you know if you're a pass holder like me I have my pass I have my kids pass I schedule my fast passes but if you're somebody buying the one day ticket through the school you get handed the ticket that morning when your kid gets on the bus at 7 a.m. so by the time you get to the park get registered because you don't have the Disney app and go to do a fast pass there's nothing they're gone they're gone. No, I get and it. Yeah. So for something like that, I think it, it would make sense. So the question I have then on, on this, at least, again, I, I, don't, I don't think it necessarily is the most horrible idea in the world because, you know, again, a lot of people don't understand how the system works and, and blah, 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 whatever. But uh, so if you buy, like I say, I buy four of these, do they come with pre-assigned times then as well? Or, yes. Or is it just, okay. But the times, I believe you might have the option to change, just like a normal fast pass. Okay. Um, I haven't actually tried. You Subject actually to, to availability, to I'm sure. Yeah, they, they do all that stuff. Right. Um, okay. But just to give you an example of one, the Fantasyland Classics, if you choose, choose that in the Magic Kingdom, it's, it's a small world, Dumbo and Mad Tea Party. Um, another one is Futuristic and Frightful. It's Buzz Lightyear, Haunted Mansion, and Tomorrowland Speedway. I'd take that one. Yeah. Um, the, the, I mean, the Magic not Kingdom terrible. ones aren't, aren't terrible. 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 Here's the um, question. Oh, John, you, if you buy four of them, yeah. do all four people in your party get the same that's time? What I was, same price? That's what I was hope, hoping um, would be the case. Like, if you're yeah, going with your family of four... Are my two kids going to get fast passes and I can't go on them? I would hope they would be scheduled at the same time. That was my that was my question essentially. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, If you'd like, uh, so going to be used for the next day. Going to be reading the fine print out loud. Um, Second, this is like watching paint dry. 
<laughs> mm, but it is for the exciting. next day. That's the thing. You can't wake yeah. up that morning and be they, like, Let's... They actually do not say that. I would hope that would be the case. I mean, can you imagine if you were going with your family? I'm sorry. You get to go on Peter Pan. No, not even oh, Peter yeah, Pan. Oh, yeah, actually you it says your family world, but... will be split up and sent to different sides of the park. Does it really? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh, you got me there. Big guy. You're you got, full of my leg. <laughs> you got yeah. to me there, Jason. I thought, uh, I thought you were reading the, what it. What we were referring earlier, one of the other ones called Delightful Encounters at Epcot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is The Seas with Nemo and Friends, Turtle Talk, and Journey into Imagination. Oof. That's yeah. The oof. <laughs> That's the keeper. Uh, it's, in fact, oof. The Seas with Nemo and Friends oof. is so good, uh, they did it twice. So nice they oh. edited it twice. It's also in the other Epcot package. There's only two, which is Spaceship Earth, Living with the Land and the Seas with Nemo and Friends. Okay, that's the better one I, right I'd there. I picked that one. That, that, yeah. Without a doubt, that is the one that I would choose. All right. Um, All right. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of what you're you're looking at with that. Okay, okay. Um, the one of the studios, one of them does include First Time in Forever, a Frozen sing-along. I don't know if that's hard to get into or not. Never tried, but ever it's seen. Frozen. <laughs> I, I, I got no clue on that one. I've never seen it. So, um, Let's see what else. There's Pint Size Adventures. It's uh, the Barnstormer, Magic Carpets, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. Caribbean Falcon. <laughs> I'm now doing it the other way. <laughs> just... uh, and then the last one to mention, uh, just as we ran through almost all of them, is Little Mermaid, Winnie the Pooh, and Monsters, Inc. I, it's not bad except for the last one. Yeah, they, I mean, they, I a like lot of Monsters Inc. But you, really, that, you just walk on that. The the main criticism most people had is, for the most part, you do not need fast pass for most of these, unless uh, it's crazy. On the time of the year. Unless yeah. it's yeah, unless it's yeah. no. crazy busy. I mean, yeah. Haunted yeah. Mansion. When yeah. is the Haunted Mansion left the forty five minute wait anymore? True. <laughs> Since they added fast pass to it. Yeah. yeah. The speedway. <laughs> If you don't get yeah. that early in the morning, because I know this because my kids still like the Speedway for some strange reason, I'm with that you. goes up. Like, That's a horrible ride to wait for because yeah, oh, hot in that queue yes. and Plus, you know, know. yeah. The the one yeah. Animal Kingdom actually isn't bad. It's Dinosaur, Cali River Rapids, and Primeval <laughs> World. Yeah. It's right. it's funny. Like we were, I, I think in the last show. <laughs> like, if we go back to episode one ten, we were talking about Animal Kingdom attractions. No, yeah. not one of us brought up Cali River Rapids as being an attraction in that park. Not a single one of us. We completely ignored the fact that it was even there. Go back. We didn't bring up the uh, water ride, the natural sauna of a park. Why? <laughs> no, we just didn't. It just we all completely ignored it. Usually, when I go to Animal Kingdom, it's cold because I go in January and March. Yeah, so and you so don't want to go on a water ride. I'm not going to Cali, so I always forget about. Which that's where, you know, if they could dial back the wetness, you know, I would go just because it was a river ride. And, you know, if you yeah. occasionally got splashed, it wouldn't be a big deal. But if you get soaked, yeah, you're you're doomed. It's kind of mm-hmm. like kind of like half of Universal or the what is it? The uh, Islands of Adventure is. Like, yeah. Toon Lagoon. There's, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like, just the rip soft rides. falls. No, I, yeah, I did that. that you know, we dried off crazy. okay, though. It was a, I think, miraculously very hot, but not so humid day in yeah. Florida. Yeah, I mean, that, it was like that one that one day out of the year we were there. <laughs> Dudley do right is deadly. Yeah, Dudley do right. Yeah, yeah. So that wasn't bad. All right, all right. I, I think it's about that time, kids. So, oh. any, any closing remarks? Just uh, so any. Anything that, uh, that one thing, yeah. anyone staying at uh, Animal Kingdom Lodge, you know, there is a refurbishment happening uh, September 3rd through the winter time period. Oh, through the winter. So, yeah, so 2019 fall, um, if you're sensitive to construction projects, avoid, please. Animal avoid. Kingdom Lodge, not the best choice for you. Okay, cool. Uh, just a reminder uh, to everybody out there, um, we're doing a Run ICOT event coming up uh, this November. Check it out on the boards. Details there. Join us if you can. You don't have to run to do that. Uh, get to meet some of your favorite podcasters and uh, also some of your friends from intercot.com, uh, the other community members. 
Um, big thanks to everybody who submitted questions tonight, and also thanks to our sponsors, Magical Journeys, uh, Nancy and crew over there, and uh, Patrick and crew over at the official Ticket Center. Be sure and support our sponsors. They are the ones who keep us bringing the magic to you. So... For everybody here at the podcast crew, Carolyn, Jennifer, Jason, Cindy, and I am still John, we'll say bye now. Bye-bye. 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 And we're clear.